This is a really unplanned live. So I have a few minutes left. I'm going to wait for people to join me here. Waiting for the audience. For the meantime, I'm going to get my stuff ready. I don't think anybody know that I'm going to have live today or tonight, but we are. We are. So we have one audience so far. We're waiting for more. <laughs> waiting for more to join so that they can also enjoy the topic that we are going to discuss tonight. No? Hello, Truth Fred. Can you hear me, Truth Fred? Thank you for joining. Hello, Yvonne. Thank you for joining. Can you hear me? I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. Because we have so much to, to talk, to cover. But can confirm... Can you guys confirm if you can hear me? Is my audio okay? Yes, po, ate, very loud and clear. Okay, thank you so much, Yvonne. Thank you so much for confirming. Okay, loyal, Robert Quanto. Thank you so much. Thank you for confirming, okay? So, um... First of all, I want to thank you guys for, you know, um, supporting me with, with this um, fight. Alam nyo, I am so busy this week because it's my midterm. So I didn't really plan to have a live broadcast. I thought I'm going to, you know, dedicate my effort and my brain to my course because it's, you know, it's midterm and it's important to me. Um, hindi ako papayag na hindi ako A kasi gusto ko perfect. So kaya I have to focus, um, you know, sa mga distractions. Hindi naman totally distractions nyo kasi ang dami ninyo na um, you're sending messages to me and asking me when is the next live. Sinasabi nyo sa akin na paulit-ulit na lang yung video ko na pinapanood ninyo. At um, I understand no na um, gusto nyo ng laging may update. So I I'm trying my best here, no, to provide you with with the update. So thank you so much. But before we we move forward, um, I would like to pray. You know, if you guys can join me in prayer, because alam ko this is not a you know a, a an ordinary fight that we're engaging. We're engaging in the spiritual fight. So a spiritual battle. So we need the the spiritual strength to carry us, you know, during this battle. And we see the light, you know, at the end of the tunnel, actually. It's a bright light, you know. We are getting in the in the end zone, you guys. So um, so it, it's so exciting where we're at right now. So before we proceed, no, um, let's, let's pray. Please join me in prayer. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for your goodness. Thank you again, Lord, for the great opportunity that you give to us. Na kung saan po um, we can discuss um, everything under the sun, Lord. Um, kung ano yung gusto nyong i-reveal sa, sa inyong mga, sa, sa mga tao, Lord, sa inyong, sa people nyo. Lord, I pray that you will... Um, Give me the courage continuously and give me the wisdom, the knowledge, Lord, to deliver whatever information that you want your people to know and to hear. Lord, I give this um, this live stream in your name and I pray, Lord, to all my listeners that you would open their mind and their heart, that they would take this as a, as, as, as a word or as, as a information from you and to them. Lord, um, I ask you to free your people. Help them realize. Help them see the things that they need to see, God. Because without your intervention, oh God, 
we can't really do anything, you know, but I am here as your mouthpiece, as a representative of your people who are being abused, who went through the struggle, who went through hell of believing that we were in the right path, but unfortunately we weren't. So I ask you, God, that each people, each soul, and each heart who are listening to me, you will open their minds, open their heart, and let them see and understand the real you and and the real information, oh God. I give things in your name. Amen. So, thank you so much. All right. So, ngayon, marami tayong pag-uusapan, no? But before I I proceed, I want to read the comments here, no? At uh, gusto kong i-greet yung mga nandito sa atin, sa ating live ngayon. Si Truth Fred, si Yvonne Parkon, thank you so much. Um, Kayola, thank you so much for being here. Um, bakit ba ito nakahide? Si Sarah Bayor, thank you so much. Uh, Mary Jane, thank you for being here. Mercy Cobb, um, thank you so much. So, guys, ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon, gusto kong i-share sa inyo ang aking screen, no? Um, we have a lot of things to talk about. So, ito ang ating screen sharing. Um, let me know if you can see this. Ang daming nagre-reklamo kasi ang liit daw ng, ng aking face pagka nag-screen sharing ako. So, ito na lang. Ganito na lang siguro, no? Hati-hati. <laughs> Sabi nila, ang liit naman ng mukha mo. Pag nag-screen share ka, hindi namin nakikita yung mukha mo. Puro yung ano, si Pacquiao ang nakikita namin. Guys, hindi na siya Pacquiao ngayon. He is the Mangkanor. ba <laughs> He is the Mangkanor of Davao. See? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, ito yung pag-uusapan natin. Um... You know, the life of the workers and members of KOJC. So, what is, you know, ano ba talaga ang buhay ng mga workers at members ng KOJC? Are they really blessed? Are they really blessed like they said they are? You know, can you guys see me still? Parang nawala yata yung aking ano. Yung aking face. Hindi ko nakikita kasi dito sa si screen. Pagka ano, pagka ganito yung settings. Um, teka lang ha. <laughs> Forgive me again. Kasi solo flight tayo lagi eh. Gusto ko kasi na um, makita nyo rin ako. All right. So, the life of the workers and members of KOJC. You know, are they really blessed? Pakyu said that they are blessed or Mangkanor said that they are blessed. And even workers said that they are blessed. They claim to be that they are blessed. You know why? Because that's what Pakyu been telling them that they are blessed even though their life is cursed because Pakyu insert into their mind you know, through words, that they are blessed, even though they're cursed. They said they are blessed. So, ganun yung ano, yung, 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 yung style nila, no? So now, let's, let's talk about, you know, blessings. You know, what, what life of blessing means. So today, ang agenda natin, our agenda is, we are going to discuss how is it like to be a member of KOJC? And how is like to be a worker in the KOJC? How is like to be a pastoral for Mangkanor? How it's like to have a family in KO, KOJC organization? How does it like to be outside of the KOJC? 
And how does it like to be completely free from the bondage of the modern Pharaoh? And what is it like to be truly blessed by the real God? So yan yung ating pag-uusapan ngayon, no? Hopefully interesting yan para sa inyo. I will make it interesting, promise. <laughs> but of course, you got to help me here, you know, because, it, you know, it's not it's not fun just to talk, you know, lagi yung tayo lang nagsasalita. So I need you guys' cooperation too, and, and I need your collaboration. So the life of a member. So pag tayo ay member ng KOJC po, the expectation or the projection ang ganda ng mga buhay natin 'di ba ang ganda ng mga damit nila pag nagsi-service sila you know ang gaganda ng ng kanilang um kunyari yung kanilang mga buhay but tingnan mo yung kanilang mga bahay iba ang kanilang buhay na pinapakita at iba yung kanilang bahay you know so the the life of a member sa loob ng organisasyon ng KOJC o the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name. Number one, they have broken family. Walang members doon na buo ang family nila. Why? It's not allowable. Kailangan i-break yan ni, ni, ni Mang Kanor. No? Yung anak nila, they are required na mag, mag-worker o kaya yung buong family mag-worker. Tapos, pagka nag-worker na yung buong family, eh, ano na sila? Tawag nito, maghihiwalay na yan sila. Yung mga anak, yung, yung parents, hiwalay na, at wala ng relationship. That's the, the, the life of the member. Isa lang yan, isa pa lang yan. Ano pa? They will be bankrupt. You know? Wala silang pera. Yung kanilang, ano, yung halimbawa, you have benefits from your company, no? Nagtatrabaho ka, you are professional. Like me. You know, my, pro, my, my profession tayo and we are working. Pag may mga benefits kayo, may mga bonuses, o kaya mag-retired kayo and you have retirement um, package. Alam nyo kung saan na pupunta yan. Doon yan kay Mang Kanur. Walang natitira sa mga pamilya nila. They leave these members broke. Broken as the hell. <laughs> so, ganon ang buhay ng, ng, mga, um, ng mga members. Why? Because they have unlimited financial goals. You know, ang dami nilang mga, um, mga alay-alay, mga goals na hindi naman... Hindi naman ano hindi ba makatarungan hindi makatarungan ng mga goals na mga demand galing kay Mang Kanor. Why? Because he wants to take everything. He wants to he, he is like um vampire ba na isasak talaga niya yung blood ng mga members. Kahit sa last drop na lang na ma, ma, maiiwan na blood isasak niya yan para yung mga members magrely sa kanya o mag sa organization at mapilitang mag-worker. Kasi, anong gagawin mo kung hindi ka na makabayad ng bahay? O, kung may mortgage ka, hindi ka na makabayad ng mortgage, anong gagawin mo? E di, mag-worker ka na lang kasi free naman yung, ano, yung, yung bahay doon. Yun nga lang, sardinas kayo. O, may pagkain naman. O, yun nga lang. Uh, very limited at kung ano lang yung ipapakain sa yun lang makakain mo at wala kang freedom you know so ganyan ang ang buhay ng ng members tapos ano pa is sacrifice yung family nila para kay Mang Kanor oh anong anong ibig sabihin what does it mean when you sacrifice your family that means yung mga needs ng family mo halimbawa husband ka Asawa mo nagkasakit, nagka-cancer o, o nagka-heart attack o ano pa. Basta kay nag, nagkasakit, member ka ng KOJC. Faithful ka financially. Kasi yun ang basihan eh ng, ng membership. Yung financial giving mo. O, faithful ka. Ngayon, you give everything. Wala nang natitira sa'yo. Where do you go? 
where do, do where do we supposed to go if you are member in the organization like like this um the king of hell organ where do you supposed to go isn't that relationship supposed to be both ways in the one way relationship it's not supposed to be just take and take but it's supposed to be give and take right that's the that's the normal relationship na na ating may experience anywhere but not in the kingdom not in the kingdom of hell. It's different. Now, when you give everything you have as member, at yung nanay mo nagkasakit, o kaya yung asawa mo nagkasakit, and you go to the organization, at uh, kahit sabihin mong mangungutang ka lang, ng a little portion of what you have given the entire life, alam mo kung anong response? Dapat ikaw pa ang magbigay sa gawain, hindi ka mangungutang. They will not give you any freaking dime. That's the type of member, life of the members sa kingdom. Oh, kayong mga members, meron bang isa sa inyo na, na nabigyan ng tulong ni Mang Kanor? Sabi niya, ano daw, full of love daw siya, full of compassion. Full of love. Meron ba isa sa inyo naka-experience ng love and compassion? Naka-experience ng, ng, ng gift, ng tulong from Mang Kanor or from the KOJC? Meron? Sige nga, kung meron, kung meron, no? Ako na magpakulong para kay Pacquiao. <laughs> oh, ako na. Kung meron, kahit isa lang. Kahit isa lang. Hindi ko kailangan ng dalawa. Example, isa lang. Oh, sige nga, kayong mga members, meron ba? Natulungan kayo ni Pacquiao? Humingi kayo ng tulong. Nanay niyo, nagkasakit. Humingi kayo ng tulong kasi lahat na lang ng, ng kita niyo, binibigay niyo dyan eh. Di ba? Sa dami ba naman ng mga goals? Oh, meron ba? Meron bang singkong duling na tinulong sa inyo, iniabot? O kaya pinahiram ba kayo? Kahit hiram lang, kahit 5-6. Wala. Zero. Ngayon, sa mga members, no, na yung mga asawa nila, kaya yung anak nila, lahat yung kanilang mga, meron nga, maraming mga members, no, na nag-retire. May mga profession sila, may mga tawag nito, generals, o majors, o, yung iba, mga doktor, Imagine, no, kahit medical doctor na biktima ni Pacquiao, na biktima ni Mang Kanor, grabe talaga kung tulong din mo yun ni Mang Kanor. Hindi mo talaga maano, hindi, hindi mo, hindi mo ma, mamamalayan. You cannot realize na ikaw pala ay nabudol. Kasi imagine, mga major, may mga pinag-aralan yan sila, may mga experience yan sa buhay, pero bakit sila nabubudol? Mga doktor, medical doktor, may iilan. Oh, they go through, they have, they have profession, you know. Yung mga brain nila, dapat, ano yan, magaling yan mag-analyze, magaling yan mag-critical mag thinking. Pero bakit sila nabibiktima? Oh, Di ba? Ganyan ang demonyo na nasa, na kay Mang Kanor. Hindi natin namamalayan na we are inside of the cage, we are inside of his, tawag nito, bitag. Mm. Kasi magaling ang demonyo magsalita. Tapos kung anong ini-insert sa mga usa, sa mga isipan natin through our ears, we take it as gospel. Mm. Mas pinaniniwalaan pa natin yung words ni Pacquiao or ni Mang Kanor kaysa Bible. Oh, hindi na tayo nagbabasa ng Bible, binabasa, pinapakinggan na lang natin yung sinasabi ni Mang Kanor, day in and day out, 24 hours. Kaya, hindi na natin namamalayan na yung mga brain natin, wala na, dismantle na. At anong nangyayari? Oh, we realize it's too late kasi wala na. Wala na tayong dugo. We cannot move. Oh, Mag-start na naman ng panibagong buhay. How can you start a new life 
when you are already in your 70s. Di ba? So ganyan ang buhay ng, ng, ng mga members ni Mang Kanor. Ano pa? Oh, sabi ko one-way relationship, no? So, when you give everything to Mang Kanor, he'll give you nothing. And that is love. Mm. That is love for him. Di ba? Sabi niya, kuno daw siya ng pag-ibig. Oh, so that's life of the members. Now let's talk about the life of the workers. You know, workers' life of KOJC, part-time and full-time. By the way, meron silang dalawang ano ori ng, ng workers, no? Part-time. Ibig sabihin ng part-time, um, hindi sila nag, nag-commit nung na... Um, na buong buhay, maglilingkod talaga sila. Maglilingkod sila part-timely. That means they have work outside the kingdom. But then, after work, at lahat ng mga kinikita nila, pinibigay kay Mang Kanor. Yan yung part-time na, na workers. Now, ano yung full-time? Yung full-time, yung doon na nakatira, walang, walang work, walang profession outside of of the organization outside of the kingdom. At uh, doon sila 24 hours nakatira sa kanilang mga lungga. <laughs> sa kanilang mga mga compound, you know, sa kanilang mga KLC yung iba. Uh, so yan, yan yung ano different types of of workers ni ni Mang Kanor. So basta ha, wala nang pakiyo ngayon, Mang Kanor na tayo. Kasi bagay sa kanya. Alam mo ba yung Mang Kanor? Yun yung ano, ibig sabihin nun, o sa binugoy pa, bisaya, magbisaya muna tayo ng saglit ha? Kasi ang, ang, ang sarap talaga i-express when you're speaking in your own language by your native language. No? Pagka ano, ang ibig sabihin ng Mang Kanor, sige, English na lang natin para masaya. It's an old buffalo eating young grass. Ganun yun. Si Mang Kanor. <laughs> so, yan yung ano, yan, yan, yan yung meaning. Kaya, gano'n na lang ang tawag natin. He is an old buffalo, but he's eating young grass. Okay? So, the life of the workers, they are in bondage. And why they are in bondage? Because they cannot make their own decisions. Lahat ng gagawin nila sa buhay, kahit siguro, kahit umutot yan sila, ipapaalam pa nila na mag-uutot muna ako ha. <laughs> so, ganun yun. They are totally in bondage. At they are edu- uneducated. Marami sa kanila hindi nakapag-aral, hindi nakatapos ng pag-aaral. Kasi they are believing in the, in the um, false promises ni Mang Kanor. Oh. Katulad sa akin noon, I was promised no na papaaralin daw ako. Oh, kaya iniwan ko yung aking ano, third year high school ako noon, hindi ko pa natapos. Mm. Kasi sabi sa akin, papaaralin daw kami, kaming dalawa ng sister ko. Yung sister ko, scholar yun sa ano eh, USP. Oh, USP ng Davao kasi matalino yun, valedictorian yun since since first grade. Mm. Kaya scholar siya. Yan ang nangyari. Sabi sa amin, si ano daw, si Mang Kanor daw ang magpapaaral sa amin. E naniwala naman kami. Yun, iniwan yung pag-aaral. Hindi ko natapos yung aking third year high school. So technically, I was second year high school no? nung pumasok kasi bumagsak ako doon sa third year. <laughs> Biruin mo ba naman, uh, tatlong buwan ka nawala. Mm. Tatlong buwan ka nawala kasi you are one of the money making machines ni ano ni ni Mang Kanor. E anong mangyayari pag balik mo sa school mo? Ide puro atya, buti na lang sana kung ano yung uniform atya ba. Eh hindi eh. May, may ano eh yung iba may atya tapos meron pang ano 4 <laughs> tres. <laughs> Kaya eh sino pa ba gusto mag-aral, di ba? Hmm. Pero ano sabi sa amin? Don't worry. Kasi yung pag-aaral, hindi na kailangan sa langit. Jesus Christ is coming. Babalik na si Jesus. Mag-glorified na tayo. Imagine, 
Naniwala naman kami yung glorification na yan, glorification na claim na yan. My goodness, paulit-ulit na lang, recycle. Naniwala kami. Oh, anong nangyari? Kaming dalawa ng sister namin, lumayas. Oh, nag-join. Dahil naniwala kami sa promises ni Mang Kanur. Anong nangyari ngayon? Lumabas ako ilang taon. 25 years old. Second year pa rin yung natapos. Buti na lang, lumabas ako. Pero yung sister ko, nananatili hanggang ngayon. Hanggang ngayon, andun pa rin. Anong nangyari? Nakapag-aral ba? No. Kahit siguro, step lang ng paaralan, wala. Zero. Hmm. Ilan pa ang may stories na ganyan? No? Na pinangakuhan ka, napapaaralin ka. Pero walang nangyari. Anong ginawa sa'yo? Ginawa kang money-making machine. Pinapatinda ka, binibigyan ka ng goal. Pag hindi ka nakakuha ng goal, binubugbog ka, pinapalo ka. At minsan, pinapafasting ka. No. Fasting ka ng ilang araw kasi hindi mo nabigay yung goal. O ganun yun. So asa na yung promise? Wala. Tapos pag i-follow up mo, katulad ko, you know, pina-follow up ko yun eh kasi gusto ko talaga mag-aral. O, anong sabi sa akin? Antayin ang kalooban ni God. Antayin daw ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Kung kailan ako papaaralin, tumanda na lang ako. Kung hindi ako lumabas doon, hindi talaga ako nakapag-aral, hindi talaga ako nakatapos ng high school. My goodness. No. Ilan pa yung mga workers na ganyan? Katu Sabi ko nga sa'yo, yan si Stephanie, ang ganda-ganda. But he, she's only the vessel. A vessel. There's no substance in it. Ang ganda-ganda. Tingnan mo sa labas, ang ganda, pero walang substance. Why? Kasi ayaw ni Pacquiao na magka-substance yung mga workers niya. Ayaw ni Pacquiao na mag-grow yung mga workers the way it should be. No. Ngayon, yung mga ano, yung mga workers at mga members no na may mga ano, may mga estudyante diyan sa JMC. No, anong nangyayari? Pag lumabas, lumabas katulad nito, may mga may mga nag-aral daw diyan sa ano, sa JMC no. Eh ngayon na-realize ng bata na he wants to grow outside of the JMC. You know, he wants to venture. Lumabas. Anong nangyari? Hindi nila binibigay yung transcript, you guys. It's very abusing in any fashion, in anything, in any aspect. Lahat ng pang-aabuso ay nandyan. Imagine, i-report nyo ga ito sa DepEd. Hindi nila binibigay ang mga transcript ng mga bata na nag-aral dyan. Oh, kasi lumabas. Oh, ganyan ka mga demonyo itong mga to. Hmm. Kasi gusto nila nahawakan nila yung tao. Kahit ayaw na sa kanila, gusto pa rin nilang hawakan. Kaya yung JMC report nyo nga yan sa Deep Ed, tanggalan niya ng ano, ng 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 tawag nito ng ng license to operate because they are not fair to people, they are not fair to their students. Tapos sabihin ano, may 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 mga scholars daw yan si Mang Kanor. Bullshit. Ginagawa sinasabi lang niya yan just to get the sympathy of people and make him look like he is he is better than what he really is. Oh. Tapos ano pa? Ano pa buhay ng mga workers diyan? Sacrifice day and night. Araw-araw hmm. nasa daan sila. Nagpapanggap ng mga estudyante. Nagpapanggap ng kung ano-ano, pipi at bingi. Tapos pag uwi niyan sa workers' house, no? Marami pa silang gagawin. Oh, meron pa silang devotional, meron pa silang mag magtatrabaho pa yan doon, work job o kaya pag na-assign sila sa kanilang mga fundraising. Oh, sila pa yung gumagawa. Walang pahinga day in and day out pero anong ginagawa ng bossing nila ni Mang Kanor? Oh, sitting pretty. But he's a worker. He is he is really a hard working man. 
and he is super handsome. <laughs> oh, ganon, ganon ang ano, ganon, ganon ang projection ni ni Mang Kanor, no? Mga ano, mga broken promises na binibigay sa mga workers. Oh, tapos yun, they are on the street begging yung iba na sa jeepney. Oh, ito nga pala pakita ko sa inyo itong video na to, no? Ito ha, sa jeepney. Kaya bantayan nyo, guys. You know, let's let's share this video. Let's share the information. No, we have to hold these people accountable. <laughs> Ito oh. Di ba kawawa no? Bata yan, dapat nag-aral yan. Pero anong, anong nangyayari? Nasa jeepney. Nag, nagbibigay ng mga sulat para manlimos para kay Pakyo, para kay Mangkanor. Oh. Oh. Tingnan nyo. Oh. See, that's the life of the workers. Oh. Tapos bless daw sila. Sabi ni Pakyo. Ang worker daw, worker's life, ay pinaka-blessed life you can ever imagine. Bless ba yan? Ang tanong, bless ba yan? Sige nga, i-ano nyo nga guys, identify kung bless yan. No? Ano pa, asa na ba yung ibang ano ko, video ko dito na gusto kong pakita sa inyo? itong mga ginagawa ni Pakyo. Ito guys, oh, gusto kong i-play din to sa inyo, no? Oh, kasi daw tinawag daw siyang false prophet. O ano daw ang ating standard? Di ba we only have one standard, which is the Bible? The Word of God? That's the standard, Pacquiao. I mean, mangkanor, old buffalo eating young grass, always. <laughs> Di ba? So yan, ganyan ang mga promises ni Pacquiao. O, tayo naman, na hindi ginagamit yung utak, nakikinig lang, tas we take it as gospel. Kaya, nabubudol tayo. But the reality, ang magiging buhay doon, magiging slave ka talaga. Oh, slavery to the max. Oh, buti na lang no, buti na lang uh, yung mga ano, yung mga minors daw, pinauwi na nila sa kanilang mga ano, mga parents. So that's the the positive thing that happened because we talk because of this program, you know? At salamat no sa mga tumulong no mga financial help na na binigay ninyo to make this happen. So marami na pong mga minors na nakauwi sa kanilang mga family but they still have to go through, you know, the the tawag nito, the un, unconditioning, you know, the, the psychology treatment kasi um iba pa rin yung effect sa kanila. So thank you so much for for helping me with that. Um, we are, you know, we are doing God's work. So, salamat talaga sa inyo. Ano pa? Ano pa ang buhay ng mga workers? They are practicing constant lies. Mm. Araw at gabi, nagsisinungaling sila para kay Mang Kanor. Guys, yan ba ay kalooban ng God? Yan ba ay paglilingkod sa Panginoon? Sinabi ba ng Panginoon na mag magsinungaling kayo for me? Para dumiritso kayo sa langit? Hindi kayo mamamatay. Diretso sa langit. Ano daw, kaagad si Pacquiao tawag nito. Um, glorified body daw. O sabi ng mga workers, oh. Glorified body na yan si ano? 
Si si Mang Kanur, tingnan niyo, bumabata. Mm. Naku, malapit na talaga bumalik si Jesus Christ kasi nag-glorified na si si Mang Kanur. Imagine yung mga KLC. Wala na, nag-close out na. Oh, sarado na yung ibang mga KLC. Yun pala kasi hindi na sila nakakabayad ng kanilang mga rent. Kasi wala nang ganon. Humihina na ang kanilang mga mga money making dahil sa ginagawa natin. No. Oh. Sige nga, hindi pa kayo masaya sa result ng mga nakikita natin. I am so happy because, you know, um, sa pagsasalitiyat natin, they are very affected. Oh, ang daming nag-close out na mga ano, meron pa nga, pinalaya sila doon sa, ano, sa Leyte. Oh, kasi hindi na nakabayad ng rent. Kasi alam nyo, yung mga KLC nila o yung mga you know, congregation nila na sa mga, mga maliliit na province, no? mga members ang nagbabayad niyan wala pong ano walang contribution diyan si Mang Kanur tapos yung mga members meron pa silang mga goal na kailangan nilang ibigay kay Mang Kanur para matuwa si Mang Kanur sa kanila kaya yung ano nila yung mga mga worship meetings nila nagsasarado na kasi wala na silang maibayad ibuti nga sa kanila kasi yung gawain naman nila ay gawain naman ng demonyo eh bakit pa sila magpapalaganap? Di ba? Yung boss nila, wanted naman. Oh. Ganun yun. So ano pa? Zero medical support, guys. Ang mga buhay ng, ng, ng mga workers. Na-discuss na natin to pa ulit-ulit, no? Pag nagkakasikit yung mga yan, nagpipila lang yan sa ano, sa tawag nito, sa lingap. Imagine, ha? Imagine. Think about it, mga workers at members. Nagsisinungaling na kayo sa buong buhay nyo para madala nyo yung remittance kay Mang Kanor. Tapos pag nagkasakit kayo, magsisinungaling pa rin kayo. Kasi hindi nyo i-accept na pag nagtanong kung saan kayo nakatira, huwag nyo sabihin na member kayo o worker kayo ni Mang Kanor. Kasi wala kayong guidance, wala kayong wisdom. Kailangan sabihin nyo, member kayo ng Iglesia ni Kristo. O kaya member kayo ng Catholic Church o iba pang ano, churches dyan. Basta wag lang yung kingdom ni, ni Disappointed Son, ni Mang Kanor. O, imagine, di ba? Sabi ni Pacquiao, pag i-deny daw siya, i-deny din niya kayo. O kaya kayo din i-deny ni Pacquiao kasi lagi niyong dinideny siya. O pagdating sa mga ganyang bagay, dapat ako inyo na worker kayo ni Pacquiao para hindi niya kayo i-deny. O tingnan niyo yung mga workers na deny ng deny na ano daw. Hindi daw sila worker ni Pacquiao kapag nahuli na nag ano, nag 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 nagpipi at bingi. O dahil dinideny niyo ang kaugnayan ninyo sa kingdom, kaya kayo nare-rape. O kaya kayo palaboy-laboy na lang. Mm. At tulad nung nangyari doon sa ano sa Singapore. No. Worker na huli kasi bawal 'yan eh yung yung nagtitinda o kaya nagsusulit sa Singapore. O nahuli yung ano, yung worker. Mm. Kasi sabi, wag daw ako in na member sila ng Kingdom. Eh dinenay niya na member sila ng Kingdom. Anong nangyari? Hindi siya makauwi sa workers house kasi minomonitor ng ng police. Kahit pagkain wala natutulog sa ano sa kalye ganyan ang buhay ng mga workers kaya kayong mga workers kung may utak kayo wag niyo i-deny na members na member kayo ni 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 Pacquiao o kaya ng mga worker kayo wag niyo i-deny bakit niyo i-deny kaya tingnan niyo tuloy dinideny din kayo kaya pag tinawagan yung office eto ba kaugnayan niyo ba to member niyo ba to o kaya worker niyo ba to si so and so E sasabihin talagang hindi. Hmm. E anong nangyayari? You're on your own. Sige nga. O ganyan, kademonyo ang, ang ano na yan, ang organisasyon na yan. O. Pero pakinggan mo, parang ang galing-galing ni Pacquiao, siya na yung pinaka-best. Pero tingnan mo ang reality ng mga workers niya. Tapos pag nagkasakit, ganun pa rin. Sisinungaling pa rin. Hanggang mamatay ang mga yan, nagsisinungaling. 
Katulad nga yung ano, yung yung kaibigan ko no, na may sakit na humingi ng tulong, pinadalhan natin ng tulong. Mm. Ngayon, minomonitor ko siya kung ano na nangyayari sa kanya. Sabi ko, do you still believe na ano, na nasa paglilingkod ka ng Diyos? Ah, sabi niya, he still she still believe daw. Tapos hanggang namatay na lang siya. Dinidinay pa rin. Ang tunay na na Panginoon kasi si Pacquiao ang Panginoon nila. Kaya ganun. Ano pa? Walang educational support. Yung sinasabi ni Pacquiao na ano, ipa-scholar yung yung mga anak ninyo. Oh, kung maganda yung mga anak ninyo, ipa-scholar niyo kay Pacquiao. Kasi potential 'yan sa night duty. As a or pastor duty. Hmm. Katulad itong anong isang isang pastoral no. Yung nanay nito televiewer ni ni Mang Canor no. Itong bata na to mestisa. Half Filipino, Filipino yung nanay. Tapos yung tatay niya taga England. Oh, nakikinig yung nanay niya na na amaze. Oh, na amaze sa mga ano ni ni, ni Mang Canor sa kanyang preaching. Anong nangyari? 12 years old yung bata kasi ano daw, i-drop off doon sa ano sa sa Davao kasi daw yung maganda yung JNC. Oh, drain up off 12 years old. Anong nangyari? Pagka-drop off, tinanggalan na ng cellphone, tinanggalan na ng any form of communication. Bawal nang tumawag sa nanay. Pero hindi pala free kasi yung nanay nagbabayad ng 80,000 pesos. Imagine nanay ka nagbabayad ka ng 80,000 pesos to realize na yung anak mo ay re-rapin ni Mang Kanor. O ngayon, 12 years old, wala pang menstruation yung bata. Minomonitor na nila. 13 years old, nagka-menstruation yung bata. Doon na. Inumpisahan na, pinapapasok na doon sa ano, sa kwarto ni Mang Kanor. Oh, unang beses, tumakbo yung bata kasi kung saan na naka, nakarating yung kamay ni Mang Kanor. Eh, anong nangyari? They torture her. Walang isa na kumakausap sa kanya. At ano pang sabi? Privilege yan pagka nirape ka ni, ni Mang Kanor. Kasi ibig sabihin, nilinis yung iyong espiritu. Hmm. Imagine, paglilinis pala yan ang espiritu yung ganyan. What kind of brain, what kind of, of mentality is that? Privilege na marit. Oh, para kay Mang Kanor. Hmm. So imagine 13 years old, nirape ni Mang Kanor. Dahil, sa nanay na televiewer na naniwala kay Mang Kanor. Hmm. Ganon yon yung mga projection nila. Educational support, meron? Zero. E lalo pa pagka emotional support. Kasi pag nagtanong ka lang, bawal. Bawal kang magtanong. Kung you have question, ask the father. Ask the father because the father will reveal kung sino talaga ang appointed son, ipapakita ng Panginoon sa'yo. E pag kayo pinakita ng Panginoon sa'yo, idemonyo siya, ayaw niyang tagapin yan. Hindi yan galing sa Panginoon, galing yan sa demonyo. Hmm. Kailangan yung, yung panaginip mo, siya si Jesus, siya yung Panginoon. Ganon yun. So that's the life of the workers. No? But ito yung ano, yung projection life nila. Iano ko nga tong aking screen para makita nyo ng, ng maayos. O, oh, tingnan nyo. Yan ang itsura natin. Oh, ang gara-gara no, ng damit. No? Yan yung aking sister. O, oh, gara-gara ng damit. May paginto-ginto pa si, si ano dito o oh, si Mang Kanor o. Oh. Oh, mga ginto yan. Nag-aalay kami ng mga ginto para kaming nasa tawag nito, 
yung yung ano ba uh, tawag nito yung sa Saudi Arabia ba <laughs> the kingdom <laughs> oh my goodness so yan yung projection life nila but it's so opposite with the reality no ano pa ano pa yung opposite ito pala yung reality ito yung projection pinapakita pagkalinggo pero ang reality ito oh bitbit si lola oh ng ano ng paninda ang tanda-tanda na may goal pa rin ito again yung aking kaibigan na she was like a sister to me pero anong nangyari nagkasakit kahit ano kahit pain medication wala manalangin ka kasi may job lo ka pag nagkasakit ka doon may job lo ka no oh. may job lo ka daw pero pag sila ang nagkasakit si Pacquiao nagkasakit hash hash ano ka agad sa batikal oh sa batikal daw meron daw nag meron daw ano nananalangin siya kailangan niyang i-concentrate yung kanyang yung kanyang espiritu <laughs> Oh my God. So, ano pa guys? Now, pastoral's life projection. Oh, ang ganda no, pa Vegas, Vegas pa sila oh. Pero tingnan nyo ang mukha ni ano, ni, ni Mang Kanor. Kita mo talaga, alam nyo galing sina nag-cross nito. Oh, sa cross, walang ginawa yan si Mang Kanor, kundi biktimahin tong mga to. Itong lahat na to, kulang pa to, meron pa silang ibang kasama na hindi nakasama dito sa Vegas. Pero tingnan nyo ang umuka ni Mang Kanor. Oh. Does he look satisfied? No? Parang tumutulo pa rin yung laway. <laughs> Grabe. Pero ito yung ano, dito sa ano, sa LA to. Dito sa bahay ni, ni Mang Kanor yung na, na kuha ng ano, ng, ng government. yung nasis ng government. So, tingnan nyo, siya lang, oh. Tumutulo ang laway, oh. Diba? So, that is the projection. Pero ang tingin ng ibang mga workers, oh, they are so privileged. Ang privilege daw ng buhay ng mga, ng mga pastoral. Hindi lang nila alam kung ano ang pinagdadaanan ng mga ito. You know, kung ito yung mga, itong mga pastoral, kung pwede lang nila i-trade in yung kanilang mga buhay sa mga ordinary workers, ginawa na nila yan. Pero hindi. Kasi once you are pastoral, you will remain pastoral. Oh, kahit mag-asawa ka pa, pag bumalik ka, tapos may anak ka, you are still considered pastoral. Yung anak mo, kailangan mong ialay kay, kay demonyo. Imagine, nanay ka. Ialay mo yung anak mo, alam mong dinaanan mo yan. You can't think about it, guys, na nangyayari yan dyan sa kanila. No. Isang pastoral, nag-asawa, nag, nag may anak babae, bumalik. Hmm. Anong nangyari? Yung anak niya mismo, binitbit niya, doon pa sa Hong Kong, inalay kay demonyo na mangkanor. Katulad nung ginawa ni 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 Mang Kanor sa akin nung sinabi niya sa akin na ialay ko daw yung anak kong babae. Hindi ko naman sinabi yun sa ano ko, sa husband ko. Kung sinabi ko yun, tinulak na siya sa ano, sa eroplano nung time na yun. I cannot imagine. Ito pa. Pastoral projection. Oh, di ba? Sabi nito oh. Only owned by one. Oh. Diba? Sweet nila, no? Oh. Owned by one daw. Ngayon, gusto kong i-play itong video na to, you guys. Kasi, nung time na um, clinic ko, walang, ano, walang, walang boses. Ito yung um, recording, no, ng, um, ng Ukrainian na pastoral sa mga meetings ni ni Mang Kanor, na hindi niya alam na nerecord pala siya sa mga meetings. Nga pakita sila sa inyo sa internet, malipayin sila. Nga pakita po man sila diyan, malipayin sila. 
Wait, 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 It will take five years, it will take ten years. It does not matter. When the opportunity presents itself, it's not a pastoral nego or a pansakua. It's a new. Di man niya kumapasakitan, membro-membro lang. Pagka nakikontakt ng lalaki niya, nakik-sex ka na sa iya. Yata mo na yung kawalimon sa iya. Pag sa internet, kung I love you, I love you ka na, yata mo na yung kawalimon sa iya. Dato ko, nasali ko sa iya mo, nato dato mo, gugman ako sa iya mo, i-trader ko niya mo. Driver, i-trader ko niya mo. Kung sa iya kong bato, dato ko, para mabawi akong doon kung sa'yo akong bato. Ikaw, ugang driver, at yung taka. Siguro doon ako, mga tayo mo doon. Dito pa ako makamabi sa akong doon. Mabita ang Muslim, doon ayaw ang killing. Hindi na ang patali ko dahil yung ministry. Hindi mo mga matay. Pero yung pagtoo, pwede mo matalikod. Ngayon na kayo gusto ninyo matalikod. Sunod daw mo yung PA. Isang kadre ka lang, sunod ka yung PA. Pagka nakalektur na kang kapila sa ilaha, di ka nakagawas. Pag di gawas ka, bukulong ka, patyon ka. Sulod mong batya, sulod mong gobyerno sa Amerika. Pag di pa sulod ka diya sa ilang CIA, di pa sulod ka sa ilang FBI, di pa sulod ka sa ilang NSA, nakabalo na ka sa ubang mga, mga confidential niya. Tapos kalikarit mo, talikod ka, di ka bukulong. Inanya nga kung ano ang commitment na ako sa inyo. Wala na'y makatalikod sa inyo. Wala na'y makatalikod sa inyo. Wala na'y pili mo traitor sa inyo. Na'y mabukod sa inyo. Patay doon mo dito. Kapahamaka na inyo diyan tuwa. I-implement po natin. Parang unahunaan ninyo na ba? Pakalaluman ninyo ang paunahunaan ninyo sa ministry na ako. May pamilya mo. Ikaw pa rin, may dahan ka rin, may suon ka. At ito yung suon ninyo. At ilang imo yung suon sa luwas. Kung doon natin na. Wala'y ibili na na. Hindi na nakalalo mong commitment na ito direct. Pero nakikommunicate mong lalaki, pagkatapos mo report-report mo sa akong ba direct. Samtang niya mo sa akong balay, ang gusto na ito direct na yung tumanon. Hindi mo pwede mong tuman direct sa gusto ninyo, at hindi na ako gusto. Kapuyon kung mag-ibig ang animal na utag sa tanas direct ba? May ibog ko ng mga moros, ng mga muslim. Na yung mga babae sila magpa-prostitute sa ilang mga warriors. Eh para... Mawala ang stress. Hindi na ako ang iyong witness sa lalaki. Ilabay din yun na kaya di na na kabubutol sa mahan. Kaya di mo na mong pastoral para sa anak lang mo. See guys? Sige nga, eh ano nyo itong, ano, itong, itong boses kung gawa-gawa? <laughs> oh. So that is the reality. No, the projection and the reality is two different things. Ano pa? Meron pa akong video. Isa pa. Papakita ko sa inyo. Alam ng inggit at pagganahin sa magkaroon ng kapangyarihan sa loob. Ito ha. Ito mga pastoral. Ang sabi daw, inggit lang daw ako. Inggit lang daw kami na mga ano, na mga nagsasalita. 
Pina, nainggit daw kami sa mga buhay nila o kaya buhay ni ano ni Mang Kanor. Ano kayang dapat kaingitan diyan? Kaingitan mo ba yang irerate ka? Kukunin yung sarili mo na hindi mo naman gusto. Kadiri kaya niyan. Di ba? Pawang mga kasinungalingan at paninira lamang. Ito ang idiniit ng mga malalapit at matagal nang kapanalig ni Pastor Apollo C. Pibuwe, Executive Pastor ng The Kingdom of Jesus Christ, paugnay sa recycled na namang akusasyon laban sa butiling Pasko. Si Admar Bilando sa detalye ng... Ah, ano ba yan? <laughs> Sorry guys. Nagsalita ang ilang sa mga matatagal ng mga manggagawa at kapanalig ng Kingdom of Jesus Christ o KJC na naging malapit din kay Pastor Apollo C. Tuloy o Gnay sa sumulpot na mga akusasyon laban sa butihin pastor. Suportado nila ang naging opisyal na pahayag ng KJC Legal Council na ang naturang inihaing kaso laban kay Pastor Apollo sa Amerika ay pawang paninira lamang at bunga lang ng inggit at pagdanais na magkaroon ng kapangyarihan sa loob. Naniniwala din ang mga ito na pawang paulit-ulit na lang o recycled ang mga akusasyon na ito laban kay Pastor Apollo. Ito ay dahil ang mga nasa likod ng panibagong kaso ay sila rin may pakana sa kaso isinapalaman kay Pastor noon sa Hawaii kung saan nanalo rito si Pastor Apollo. Si Loris Nepomoceno, mahigit dalawang pung taon ng kapanalig ng KJC at naging personal assistant pa sa mahabang panahon ni Pastor Apollo ay nagsalita at dumipensa kay Pastor. Kabilang ako sa Kingdom of Jesus Christ for 21 years at isa rin ako sa mga pastoral, mga binuang sa pastoral ministry ng kingdom under sa pagtuturo na aming mahal na pastor, Pastor Apollo C. Kibulon. Para sa akin, Pastor Apollo is the epitome of love. Niminsan, hindi niya ipinagkait ang buhay niya upang ipakilala at ipaalam sa mga tao na tunay ang Diyos at ang kalooban nito. Ang accusations against Pastor Apollo C. Kibulon Patungkol sa sex trafficking ay wala anumang basihan at pawang kasi nung nalingan lamang upang dulisan ang marangal na imahe ng aming, ang, ng aming pastor. Sa 21 years na nandito ako as full-time and pastoral staff bilang assistant, minsan hindi ko naranasan ang anumang pang-abuso mula sa kanya at lalo walang pang-abuso ako nakikita na ginagawa niya sa aming lahat. At sa mga kasamahan ko, pinaninindigan ko ito ng aking buong buhay. <laughs> Ang matagad ng KJC musician at naging personal assistant ni Pastor Apollo sa mahabaling panahon na si Charissa Corbo ay pinasag na rin ang katahimikan para patotohanan na pawang mga gawa-gawa lang ang paratang laban kay Pastor Apollo. Pinili ko ngayon ang gumarap sa kanila para pasinungalingan ang lahat ng mga sinabi ninyo kasinungalingan sa aming mahal pastor. Dahil po, sino ba ang paniniwalaan ninyo? Kami na nakasama at na-encounter mismo si pastor at kami mismo po bilang parte po ng pastor at minister ay naging, naging malapit po, naging assistant po ng aming mahala pastor. Isa po ako sa mga naging malapit na assistant ng aming mahala pastor at ng aming mga administrators. At sasabihin po po sa inyo na wala kami ibang nakita sa aming mahal. Wala po kami kahit kaunting masamang nakita sa aming mahal. So, purong abutihan po lahat. <laughs> Isa rin ang SMN News Anchor na si Jay Calabroso sa binago ang buhay ni Pastor Apollo. Kabilang ito sa napakarami ng mga kabataan na pinag-aral hanggang sa makapagtapos ng libre ng butihing pastor. At sa halos dalawang dekada niya sa KJC, pawang kabutihan at punong-puno ng pag-ibig ang kanyang nakita at naramdaman sa loob at maging sa mga taong natulungan ni Pastor Apollo na hindi mga kaanib. <laughs> Well, uh, hindi na po namin itinagulat yung uh, kalitang lumabas ngayon laban kay Pastor Polo C. Kibuloy ng The Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Alam mo ninyo, sa loob po ng uh, mahigit o oh, almost 20 years na dito po ako sa paglilingkod, marami na po kaming hinarap, marami na po kaming pinagdaanan mga akusasyon, paninira, laban kay Pastor Polo C. Kibuloy. Pero lahat po yon ay uh, hindi po nagtagumpay. Kaya naman po sa panibagong hamon at panibagong kaso na pinakarap ni Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy, naniniwala po kami ng mga kingdom citizen, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, 
na ito po ay malalagpasan po namin. At higit sa lahat, malilinis po ang pangalan ni Pastor Apollo City Boroy dahil lahat po ito ay wala po katotohanan. At ako naman po ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa napakalaking privilehyo at pagtitiwala na ibinibigay ni Pastor Apollo City Boroy. Kami po ay patuloy na susuporta at nasa likod po ng ating uh, buting pastor sa laban na ito at naliniwala po kami na ito po ay malalagpasan ng aming buting pastor. <laughs> Maraming din kinundina ni Sheila Ponsica, isa sa mga matagal na rin na sa pastoral ministry, ang mga paulit-ulit na paratang laban kay Pastor Apollo. Ikinuwento din ito ang kanyang naging karanasan sa loob ng KJC kasama ang butihing pastor. So yung pastoral department, parte siya sa, um, sa circle ni Pastor Apollo si Kibuloy and Lahat ng ginagawa namin is um like assist mag, nag-aassist kami sa pagkain sa lahat ng ano sa circle ni pastor at sa lahat ng mga uh, yung, na, uh, uh, sa paligid ni pastor and at hindi po ako sumasang-ayon sa lahat ng paratang dahil hindi po totoo ang lahat ng paratang nila. Ako po mismo ako po mismo ang testigo bilang isang pastoral, naniniwala ako na si pastor ay isang mabuting tao dahil ako mismo saksi ako sa buhay ng anak. Saksi ako mismo na si pastor, wala siyang, wala siyang ibang gusto para sa amin mapabuti ang aming buhay bilang isang babae. Gusto niya kami bigyan ng marangal at dignidad na buhay. At isang Para sa akin, isang napakamalaking privilegio na maging bahagi sa circle ni pastor, na maging isang pastoral, at hindi ko po pinagsisisihan na um, i-offer at i-align aking buhay dito sa Kingdom Nation. <laughs> Tinulog sa din ni Angel Fabria, ang mga dating tong kasamahan na umalis at ngayon ay naninira kay Pastor Apollo. Anya, puro kabutihan ang ibinigay ni Pastor Apollo sa kanila. Pero ang sinuklay ng mga ito ay mga walang katotohan ng mga akusasyon. I have been in the kingdom for 18 years and I was assigned in the pastoral for almost 15 years. Kahit saan si Pastor pumunta, nakakasama kami. And yet yung mga pang-aako sa nila, kay Pastor Apollo si Kibloy na sex trafficking, child abuse, human trafficking, that is not true. Kasi kahit minsan, most of the times, kahit si Pastor pumupunta, nakakasama kami na kaasis, walang mga bagay na gano'n. Dito sa loob ng kingdom, puro pag-ibig at paggawa lamang ng kalooban ng hama ang nasa puso at isinasabuhay namin araw-araw. Para sa mga kasama namin mga pastorals noon, na ngayon ay wala na lumabas na, ngayon ay naninira na sa aming pinakamamahal na pastor. I'm sorry to say, you cannot shake in the kingdom nation with your lies. At mga story, mga story ang yung gawang gawa lang. Shame on you. It will all come back to you. <laughs> ang isa pa sa mga news anchor ng SMNI na si Joy Tabanao ay nagpatutuo rin kung gaano kabuti si Pastor Apollo at pinasinungalingan ang mga ipinaparatang laban kay Pastor Apollo. <laughs> Full-time worker po ako sa the kingdom of Jesus Christ for 13 years but also pastoral care department under sa namuno ni Pastor Apollo City Boy. Since from the very beginning na uh, nag full time ako sa kingdom, legit talaga ang pagtuturo ni Pastor when it comes to discipline, stealing the right values, at uh, most of all, kung paano sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos sa aming buhay on a daily basis. Kung isang tao nakasentro ang impact at uh, isipan niya sa kanyang emosyon, at sa kanyang sarili, hindi mo maiintindihan ang hangarin ng buti ng pastor. Gusto niya, gusto niya na gawin, gawin tayong mga may damal, honor at uh, marirespetuhan kahit sa buong mundo. Being in a congregation where you would obey the rules is tough and difficult if you are not disciplined or being. Simply because ayaw mo makurek, mataas ang video mo at right. But still, kay pastor lang talaga makikita ang love for one another. Love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself, even to the extent in loving your enemies. 
Kaya nakuha ko talaga ni Pastor na the more kang husgahan at akusahan, the more itriple mo ang kabutihan sa buhay mo. Kaya to those that falsely accuse the Son and the Kingdom ministry, I would like to frankly proclaim to the whole world na hindi kayo makakaabot sa position kung saan kayo ngayon if it is not because of Pastor or Apollo City Bulay. For all that he has done, to the extent na ma-abuse na kanyang goodness, na-enjoy mo nyo nga ang amenities dito sa kingdom, but in return, look at how you responded to the good that Pastor has given you. Kaya nandito po ako, I am just one of those na binang ko na salita ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Pastor at will boldly say na ang lahat ng inaakusa sa kanya ay paw- pawang wala katotohana at purong kasinungalingan lamang. I am here to go against those people that have been here in the kingdom and are very ungrateful since from the very beginning. <laughs> Sa huli, tiniyak ng mga batikan at ikalibre ng mga abogado ng Kingdom of Jesus Christ at ni Pastor Apollo C. Piguloy na kumpiyansa at nakahanda sila sa anumang mga palaki laban sa puting pastor at sa mga kingdom leader. Ang mga tanong ay ng mga miyembro at mga manggagawa ng KJC at maging ng mga supporter o mga naniniwala kay Pastor Apollo na hindi kaani. Bakit paulit-ulit ang akusasyon sa kabila ng pagkabasura ng mga unang kaso laban kay Pastor Apollo? Bakit itinaon sa panahon ng halalan kung ang sinasabing paratang ay noon pa nangyari? Bakit palaging idinidikit ang pangalan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte at kay Pastor Apollo? Kapag paninira kay Pastor Apollo, bakit ang bilis kumalat ng balita? Pero kapag ang mga humanitarian activity ng butihing pastor o ang mga pagtulong nito sa panahon ng pangangailangan, bakit hindi magawa ng mga media giant na maibalita? Ito si Arbor Glando, SMNI News. Subscribe to SMNI News channel and turn on notification <coughs> for more news up. So guys, what do you observe they have in common? May nakita ba kayo na commonality? sa mga ano sa mga pastorals na nagsasalita they have scripts in front of them <laughs> they have script may paiyak-iyak pa oh hindi daw sila natatakot eh sana samahan na nila si Mang Kanor dito harapin na kami harapin na yung ano yung kaso eh bakit hindi nila masamahan yan Siguro nga yung mga yan nagpaparas pa na yan para ano para walang makitang ano residue sa mga ano ni ni Mang Kanor. Challenge ko sa inyo no kayong mga pastoral diyan ah, kunyari magpaano kayo nga magpa magpa-check nga kayo ipapakulong ko yung sarili ko kapalit sa boss niyo kung virgin kayo. Sige. Challenge ako magpapakulong para sa inyong sa inyong butihing pastor kung may isa sa inyo diyan na virgin. Huwag niyo nga akong lukuhin, huwag niyo nga kaming paglulukuhin diyan. Akala niyo hindi namin alam mga nangyayari. Binubulag niyo pa kami. Oh, yung mga members, bubulahin niyo nang ganyan. Akala niyo forever na itatago yung mga ganyang impormasyon. kalukuhan. Ito pa guys, meron akong babasahin sa inyo no, na affidavit. Again. Pero one hour na tayo kaya break muna no, basahin muna natin yung ating mga comments. Pagbabalik natin, basahin ko yung affidavit, no? Sige nga, magbasa nga muna tayo ng comments. Okay, Gianna Mier, good from LA. Thank you so much. And promote Miss Arlene Pasensya na. Yes, it's okay, no problem. Yan, that's better. Okay naman. Okay, nako pait ang kinabuhi sa mga workers ni Kibuloy. Yes, truth Fred, tama. Okay na po Miss Arlene. Okay, tama lang half and half at ang nakikita namin. Thank you, Marcy Cob. Ang hirap ng buhay doon. Ikaw ang maghahanap ng pagkain mo, kulang sa tulog. Palaging pagod, puro kuta ang dapat mong isipin. Yes. 
Maganda ang tayo pero ang tiyan walang laman. Yes, tama yan. I pray that God will use you as a teacher of God's word. God has great plan for your life. Thank you, Mercy. Nag-brown out. Uy, uy nag-brown out. Eh, diha. Hindi ganyan ang promise ng ating tunay na Diyos na pinaglilingkuran. Tama, Mercy. Si Kibuloy ba yun, Mangkanor? Yes, si Kibuloy ang Mangkanor. You know, old old buffalo eating young grass ang style kasi, kaya Mangkanor. Okay, Joanna Meyer, a few has testified they're being fed and housed. I wonder if that's the case for everyone in the Glory Mountain. Totoo po na ano, merong they, they are being housed, they are being fed, but then they are also exploited. You know, half truth ang binibigay nila, not the whole truth. That whole truth, yes, they are housed. Yes, they are fed, pero hindi maganda yung pagkain. You know, kung ano lang yung ibibigay sa kanila. Uh, sometimes, ano lang, lugaw. No? But they are exploited. Why? Because they have to work on the, kung hindi ka magtitinda, hindi ka magpapanggap na pipi at bingi, hindi ka magsisinungaling, magsisinungaling doon na estudyante ka, magbubungkal ka ng lupa, magtatanim ka, day in and day out, at bawal ang magsasalita doon, bawal magtatawanan. So, exploitation to the max. Oh, yung galing sa kanila ng information, half-truth, katulad ng mga sinasabi ng mga pastoral na pleneko. Oh, half-truth. Mm. Ewan ko lang kung merong isa sa kanila doon na mga birhin pa. Sige nga, i-challenge. Challenge. Take my challenge. Pa-check up kayo kung may isa sa inyo na virgin. Ipapako ako na magpapakulong dyan pa sa Pilipinas. Kung may isa sa inyo na virgin. Dapat ma mabilis ka tuwing kainan or else wala kang kakainin. Tama talaga, truth friend. Ang kay Kibuloy, kay Kibuloy lang at yung sa inyo, kay Kibuloy din. Tama, walang pili kahit doktor na isahan. Wala talagang pili, oo. Kasi, when, you know, when you are, when you are, um, tawag nito, na loko ka, you don't know that you are being loko, otherwise you won't be loko. <laughs> you know? If you if you know that you are being scammed, then you won't be scammed anymore. You know, you will realize. Pero ang, ang masama kasi, hindi natin alam na nai-scam tayo kasi we take down our guard. Oh, wala na, hindi man lang natin iniisip. Basta kung ano lang yung nararamdaman natin, kung ano naririnig natin at nararamdaman natin, wala na, diretso. Kaya ganun ang nangyayari. Um, Mel is napakagandang babae naman ito. Oh, yung mga ano nasa video. Oh, magaganda talaga si Pri, si ano si si Mang Kanor, hindi yan kakain ng ano, hindi maganda. Ang lahat ng maganda kinakain niya sa kanya daw kasi mag ano, dadaan daw sa kanya yung mga magaganda kasi yun daw yung ano promise sa kanya ni God, the Father. Sino kayang father yang nagpromise sa kanya ng ganyan? Oh. Father na demonyo. Jane Mir, uh, please pray the, the vid from last live broadcast that had no sound. Ah, okay. Yes, I will play. I play ko yun. Bless Monday to you, Ma'am Arlene Stone. Ay, o nga pala, Diyo Kala, no, Monday na dyan sa, sa Philippines. It's Sunday evening dito, 9 o'clock, 9.46 p.m. My time. Good to see you again. Um, Good shape and healthy po, handpick waving. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, truth Fred, ako nagka-problema sa tonsil, humingi ng tulong, ini-ignore lang. Nako, tonsil lang yan, ini-ignore. Uh, yung iba doon na, kung hindi pa ano, kung hindi pa lalala yung, yung sakit, hindi ka dadalhin sa lingap. Hmm. Pero lingap na naman, magpipila ka doon. <laughs> Init. Jacob Mission Men, ang promise ni Mang Kanor, hindi na kailangan ang mag-aaral kasi dadating na si Mang Kanor na inyong tagapagligtas. Tama. Kone, hello Arlene, hello everyone. Good morning from the Philippines. Yes, good morning Kone. Um, pag teacher ka na full-time worker, gawin kang teacher sa JMC nila. Tapos ang teacher na unbeliever, nagsasahod ng tama at malaki. Tama, that's from Ibon. That's true. Yes, true. Hinuhold nila yung mga credentials. Yes, na, bawal yan eh. That's illegal. Yung mga ginagawa nilang ganyan, illegal. Report yan sa DepEd. 
para matanggal yan ng ano yan ng ng tawag nito ng license to operate as a school that is terrible jo kalan siguro inaantay nilang maari si Quicks bulok para makalabas na sila diyan sa kulto ni Pacquiao sigurado Jacob Nation illegal yan ang pag hindi nila binigay ang transcript Ang mga student dapat matigna ng deep ed tolpo ninyo. Yes, tolpo alam nyo, nag ano ako eh, nag 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 I try to connect with tolpo. I think they are scared, you know, kasi nasa Pilipinas sila at alam nila kung anong ano to si kung anong klasing demonyo to si ano si Mangkanor. <laughs> oh. So but you know, I'm hopeful and I'm praying na tayong mga ano mga church, mga churches diyan sa Pilipinas no from Iglesia ni Cristo dating daan, mga born again Christians, we should be together with this fight of inhumane practices no. Na sana magkaisa tayo at let's hold kibuloy umang kanor accountable sa mga ginagawa niya sa mga tao. Okay, Michelle Edwin, keep educating the laws. God bless you, Ma'am Arlene. Thank you so much, Ibon. <laughs> Tawa si Ibon, no? <laughs> Deserve. Pakyo talaga, Rose Rosal. Pakyo talaga, hehehe. Okay, Ibon, meron pa akong alam noon na sa takot umuwi ng workers' house na walang remittance imbis na produkto ang mga itinda, ang sarili, katawan, ang bininta para lang may i-remit. Pag-uwi para hindi maparusahan. Oo, ang daming mga workers na mga babae na ganyan. Kahit dito sa LA, yung mga pumunta dito, oh, nag, nag, nagka-clubbing sila sa gabi. Bibinta yung katawan para may ma-remit kay Mang Kanor. Oh, kasi si Mang Kanor, ang kasiyahan niya, pera. Yung buhay ng tao, walang halaga. Tapos puno daw ng pag-ibig. Sabi nung mga pastoral na nag-testify, Love your neighbor as yourself. Paano siya makapaglab ng neighbor kung mga workers niya mismo hindi niya ma malab? If you love, if you think that you love someone, then you help them. Help their life getting better. You know? Help them with their struggle. Ibakit e mo sila tinatanggalan ng, ng opportunity o tinatanggalan nyo sila ng, ng tools to improve themselves? Hindi yan love. Selfishness yan. Love, love tong mga ano, mga pastoral, hindi naman alam ang meaning ng love. Kasi okay lang sa inyo, naripin kayo niyang, uh, ng mangkanor na yan. O, oh, na night duty kayo, privilege yan. Anong klaseng utak meron kayo? Diyos ko. Paano nyo, paano nyo ma-evalue yung sarili nyo? Knowing that someone was taken advantage of you. You know, knowing that part of yourself has been taken from you. Like in a constant basis. How can you look at the mirror and say that I'm worth it? I am valuable as a woman, as a person. Sige nga, mga pastoral. Tingnan nyo nga mga sarili nyo sa salamin. At sabihin nyo, valuable kayo. You have value in yourself. Knowing na a night before, you went to the PD, pastor duty, or night duty. Hindi nyo naman gusto, pero wala kayong magawa. Sige nga. Ay, Diyos ko. Kone, si Jesus Christ, Diyos na nagkatawang tao para maging example natin. Paano maging tao si, si Kibs, tao na nagpiling Diyos. Sige, ta tama. Feeling talaga niya na Diyos siya. Diyo kalan gusto ni Paki walang education background ang lahat ng members niya para mauto-uto niya. Tama, yes. Jose Rosal, sinos, sinosok-soka ng panli, panlinis face, orange frowning. Tama, okay. Cecilia Cuento, hello Miss Arlene, ingat palagi. Thank you. Silya, Jose Rosal, sa mga huling araw ng mundo, lilitaw ang mga bulaang propita. Tama yan, Miss Arlene, we pray for your safety always. Be vigilant in your ways po. Mga evil doers of Pacquiao na sa paligid lang. Tama, Jo. Thank you. Nilin Lasado, good morning. Musta na, Miss Arlene, ingat ka lagi dyan. And God bless you always watching from Hong Kong. Thank you so much no, sa mga taga Hong Kong. Please um, share my video and please subscribe. no sa mga videos ko at sa channel ko 
para ma, ma, malaganap natin itong mga ganitong information. Kasi pag sila ang pinapakinggan natin, half lang ng information ang mga naririnig natin, hindi ang kabuuan. But here, you get the right information kasi I will not hold back. I will not hold back for you guys. Erlinda Gadiano, um, hindi tunay na alagad ng Diyos ang mangkanor na yan kung ganyan ginagawa niya at pa, patakaran niya. Tama. Filipina Iskala, good evening sis. God, have your back. Yes, thank you so much. Yuka lang to, siya ang tunay na boses ni fake Pastor Pacquiao. <laughs> Tama. Pay mer, meron sindikatong kulto ni Mang Canor diyan sa Pampanga. Nag-operate Manggot sa San Fernando. Yes, pero magko-close na din daw yan. Kasi ano, wala na silang pambayad sa kanilang ano, kanilang venue. Um, run out daw dyan kay ano, kay Truth Fred, Joe Kalan. Hindi gawa-gawang audio yan. Tunay na tunay na boses niya yan. Malapit na ang hatol sa fake pastor na yan. Yes, sigurado. Filipina Iskala, I just shared. To all KLC Canada, Toronto, Los Angeles, um, West Virginia, I have been reporting to FBCs. Thank you so much, Filipina, for doing that. Uh, Jacob Mission, harapin niya ang akusasyon ng but-but yung kumampi ni Kibuloy. Halata naman, di ba? Nakita niyo may mga script naman yung mga yan. Sige nga, subukan nga nila. Gusto ko talaga makita sila sa ano ba, sa hearing ba? Para pagka cross examination, makikita natin kung ano yung mga sagot ng mga pastoral na yan. No? Kung sasabihin nila walang nangyari sa kanila, hindi sila inalay. Tapos sa cross examination, ma oh, lalabas ang mga yan. Okay, dear, um, kasi si Pope, okay, Filipina Iskala, yung nagsalita, malaki ang bonus niya ni Kibuloy. <laughs> Truth, Fred, haha, nabago dahil nagharap na wala daw pang aabuso, puro lang kalukuhan. <laughs> Tama, Truth, Fred, sorry to say, paano pobre sila kaya nabighani sa yaman ng pagpapalimos ni Pacquiao. Ay, isa din yan, sa dahilan, ay, yung kahirapan kasi, no, wala tayong, ano, hindi natin nakikita yung reality. Nakikita natin ang, ang mga projection ba? No? Joe Kalan, Miss Arlene Stone, ang FB account niya ay existing pa. Yan dapat ang naabolish na daming nalulukong reporter at members dito. Uh, manginig kayo at kinalabutan mga edukado kayong tao, maawa kayo sa mga biktima niyo. Oo nga, Joe. May mga ano, may mga, you know, professions yung iba pero nabiktima pa rin. So, Fred, mingaw na ang kulto ni Kibuloy Karon. Hangim sa yun ang maayo ang mga membro, ang mga workers. Tama, Diyos. Galan, well said, Miss Filipina, kahit sa patalim, lahat ng mga nagsasilita dyan sa, kakul sa kakulo ng dugo. Ang list ni Pacquiao sa Amerika, by Filipina, Iskala, Pinoy mentality, too low, sorry. Okay, paano magkaroon ng dangal kung ang membro ay naghihirap? Oo, yun ang dangal nila, ang kahirapan ng membro at kasaganahan ni, ni Mang Kanor. I want to vomit daw, sabi ni ano, Scala. Nag-uutal ng lahat mga patutuo ng mga girls. <laughs> Oo, ba diba? Kawawa. <laughs> ah, ang babaw nila, sabi ni Pilipina Scala. Sana itur tayo ni Kim sa loob ng Kingdom Poro lang ilaw sa labas ipinapakita. Oo nga kasi yung loob niyan, ano, kalawang na, kinalawang. Hmm. Para skeleton pa rin. Pilipina iskala parang iniiyot habang nagsasalita si. <laughs> ah, katawa. Erlinda Gadiano, sige ibulgar niyo lahat gagawin ni Mang Canor di siya alagad ng Panginoon Hesus. Let's do it. Um yes, audio okay. Phil, JR, Tabayuyong, watching from Cambodia. Thank you so much. No, hello sa mga Cambodian dyan. Um, thank you for following us and watching us, you know. Um, Filipina Iskala, iisa ang tete. <laughs> Oo, grabe. Iisa lang talaga. Magdait na si Pax ang makulong gamit ang palad ng Sibin Moria. Tama. Joe Kalan, agree Miss Filipina, wala bang ma-acquire sakit yan sa doon? Okay, Joe Kalan, pray more and more para maparusahan yung six traffickers na yan. Peter, Joe, hello ate, hello din, Teresa Marie, he's so evil. Okay, he should 
be punished and held accountable. Yes, we need to hold this man accountable. So ngayon, like I promise, meron akong babasahin sa inyo na tawag nito um, affidavit. Gusto nyo? Gusto nyo basahin? Sa Pilipinas nangyari ito. Ito yung kaso niya sa Pilipinas na ini-install niya. Hindi siya nagsumisipot sa mga hearing. Tingnan, hanapin ko muna yung ano ha. Yung document na yan. Okay. Gusto nyo basahin natin? Okay, sige daw. Sabi. Sige nga, basahin natin. I-share ko sa inyo itong aking babasahin. Alright. Let me share. Kita niyo no. Kita niyo yung ano, yung screen na to. Okay, itong affidavit na to, ito yung case ng ng ano, rape case na pinile diyan sa Davao. Oh, sige, basahin natin ha. On 12/18/19, walang workers or members na nakakaalam nito. Kasi sabi ni Pacquiao, gawa-gawa lang daw. At narinig niyo naman yung mga ibang ano pastoral sabi gawa-gawa lang din daw pero tingnan natin kung ito ba ay gawa-gawa. Okay, Public of the Philippines Department of Justice National Prosecution Service Office of Davao City Prosecutor Davao City Davao del Sur. Blenda is Portugal, the complainant versus Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy. Jacqueline W. Roy, yung singer nila, Crescente Canada, ito yung kapatid ni Ingrid Canada na ano, na grabe mang mang abuse ng mga workers, Pauline Canada, ito yung kapatid ni Ingrid Canada din at si Ingrid Canada. Kasi sila yung mga accomplices, no? Rape as defined under R266-A. Part 1, C of the Revised Penal Code as amended by RA number 8353, Qualified Trafficking in Person as defined under Sec 3A in relation to Sec 6 of RA number 9208 as amended by RA number 10364 and Child Abuse as defined under Sec 3B of RA number 7610. Affidavit complaint. Blenda Sanchez, Portugal, 22 years old, being born on April 3, 1997, Filipino, single, a resident of Limosville, Balmoria, Interina Law Firm, second floor, Bview Square Building, Liwayway Commercial Area, National Highway, Cagum City, Davao del Norte, Philippines. After having been sworn sworn to in accordance with law hereby freely depose and state that i am executing this affidavit complaint for purposes of filing appropriate criminal cases against pastor apollo sikibuloy here and after referred to as respondent pacquio or mancanor for brevity jacqueline w roy here and after referred to as respondent roy for Brevity, Crescente Canada, a.k.a. Enting, hereafter referred to as Responded Enting for Brevity, Pauline Canada, here and after referred to as Responded Pauline for Brevity, Ingrid C. Canada, here and after referred to as Respondent Ingrid for Brevity, who all may be served with subpoena and other processes of this honorable office of the office address of 
Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, located at KJC Compound, Philippines, Japan, Friendship Highway, Buhang in Davao City, Philippines. And Sylvia Simanis, herein after referred to as Respondent Simanis for Brevity, who may be served with subpoena and other processes of this office at Kingdom Local Congregation of KJC in Pasig City, Metro Manila for rape. With respect to Pacquiao, a.k.a. Mangkanor, as defined under Art, the 266-A, Par, 21C of the Revised Penal Code, as amended by RA number 8353, Qualified Trafficking in Person, as defined under Sec. 3A in relation to Sec. 6 of RA number 9208, as amended by RA number 10364 with respect to all the respondent and child abuse as defined under Sec. 3B of RA number 7610 with respect to all respondent. Number two, I am a former full-time miracle worker, FTW, of Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, herein after referred to as KJC for brevity, founded by Pacquiao, a.k.a. Mangkanor. Dinagdagan ko lang yan, Mangkanor. <laughs> Number three, I came to know the KJC ministry through my father, Elisio C. Portugal Jr., who was then an avid televiewer of Pacquiao's own TV program. I was 10 years old back then when my father became a member of KJC through its branch in Pasig City designated as Kingdom Local Congregation, here and after referred to as KLC for brevity, which is headed by a district coordinator. Back then, the district coordinator of KLC, Pasig City, was Simanius. In, in retrospect, I realized that she was the one who first took advantage on our family vulnerability and exploited the first indications of our blind submission and uncritical obedience, especially that of my father. Among those indicators, indications was the willingness of my father to be engulfed with death just to comply with the tithes demanded on our family by Pacquiao and KJC. There were times before when my father would not leave our house because he was hooked on TV watching Pacquiao's program 24 hours a day. In fact, when Pacquiao prayed on TV, my father would hold the television screen and pray with him. My father became then an active member of KJC and never missed the church activities. This fanatical act of my father set the things in motion which led to our exploitation because we unwit unwittingly believed that Pacquiao is indeed what he claimed to be and we became devoted to him and his teaching. Now let's go back to the note here. Attached as Annex A to um, A-6 are the picture depicting me with other KJC workers and pastoral department workers of Pacquiao to form integral parts thereof. Attached is Annex B and printed picture of my father standing with KJC calendar on the wall as a backdrop bearing Pacquiao photos, which I have caused to be printed to form an integral part hereof. Number six, about 2009, when I was 12 years old, I started going to the KJC church together with my sister Elaine S. Portugal, who was then 10 years old. At the highest of the Simanes, the KLC Pasig City Coordinator, our father forced us to go to the KLC Pasig City because according to Pacquiao's teaching, it was the father's will for the salvation of our soul, and my father blindly believed so. There was a time when our father would reprimand us if we refused to go to KJC Church. The said admonishment was repeated when my sister and I were already full-time miracle worker at KJC headquarters in Davao City. My father was deeply obsessed with Pacquiao, and he even sold several of our properties and gave the proceeds thereof to Pacquiao's church. Upon the prodding of the later since doing so is part of the later's main teaching. 
Had my parents not believed in me to spare our house, we would have been homeless when we left the KJC. In 2010 to 2011, my sister Elaine and I were exposed and became active members of KGC through its KLC Pasig City led by Simanis, who exerted earnest effort in recruiting us to take an active participation in KGC's activities, especially the fundraising through begging and caroling. In short, we initially learned and participated in KGC activities through KLC Pasig City. In May 2011, upon prodding of Simanis, my father instructed me and the complainant to attend our first KJC Regional Youth Congress in Baguio City with all the expenses on our accommod- accommodations, food, and transportations being shouldered by our father. In retrospective, I realized that KJC Youth Congress is aimed to discover hidden talent from the attending youth who are already members and others who are all potential members. There are several activities showcasing different talents and to impress upon us that it was a privilege to be there and that it behove upon us to please and submit to the will of the Father through his self-claim appointed son. Respondent Pacquiao, thus all the fellowships, meetings, and seminars at the said event. Although At that time, my sister and I did not fully comprehend their implications and meanings that Father's will for Pacquiao is to let myself to be exploited, both in forms of sexual and forced labor. But looking back, I realized that in the bigger picture of things, the event was nothing else but designed to instill upon me, my sister, and the rest of the attending youth that blind submission and uncritical obedience, which are among the vital contributors contributing factors of our silence amidst the abuses and the perpetration thereof. Sometime in 2012, my sister and I were baptized under KJC rights, and we officially became members of KJC over the objection of our mother, Emily S. Portugal, who at that time was not fully convinced Yet at respondent Pacquiao's teaching such as he is the appointed son of God, among others. However, Pacquiao was able to gain the trust and confidence of my mother as the later had also fallen under the spell of Pacquiao's fanatic teaching. Eventually, upon gaining moral authority and as in their as in then see over us through constant indoctrination that earning money for KJC was whatever means is a moral thing to do, Simanis instructed us to participate in the area activities and force us to beg for money from any person, do carolings anywhere, sell old top, give giving envelopes to solicitations and more. The same instruction was repeated by Pacquiao himself when I was already a full-time miracle worker. I was 14 years old back then when I was taught to knock from house to house to beg for money, even if it was against my will. In other words, my sister and I were indoctrinated that actively participating in the fundraising activities of the KJC, such as begging and caroling, is part of being a member of Respondent Pacquiao's KJC. Thus, despite the feeling of embarrassment and being confused, we were forced to beg from any person's institution and establishment. I was confused due to the fact that we were given daily quotas on how much we should earn in begging and due to the expense instruction from Respondent Simanis, the coordinator of KLC Pasig City, that we should never disclose our affiliation with Respondent Pacquiao's KJC and we were even advised to use other religions, sects, or even associations as our affiliated front groups in case of being asked. This instruction was repeated by Respondent Pacquiao himself when I was already a full-time miracle worker of KGC. My sister and I were innocently following what we were instructed to do without even knowing what could possibly happen to us. My father did not even bother what our coordinator asked us to do. According to my father, we just have to continue and follow because it is the will of the Almighty Father. 
or they called it Father's Wheel. Even though I was not musically talented, I learned to play musical instrument because I was part of the group that asked or begged for money through rendering songs or caroling. In September 2011 to January 2012, KJC called it Months of Blessing, MOB. All the members and full-time miracle workers of KJC were forced to sell anything or fundraising, beg money using different names of associations and group anywhere in the Philippines and even outside the country. We had no choice but to obey our coordinator. Otherwise, we would be called to the KJC office, lectured with Bible passages, and beaten up with any objects. During the month of blessings, KJC members and full-time workers were ordered to go to Manila and other parts of the country and around the world to raise money for the church. I have, I have personal knowledge thereof because I was among those instructed to participate in the fundraising activities during the said event and on the occasions thereof. I learned from other members who originated from other parts of the country that our activities were coordinated KJC-wide. Like me, the members and workers involved were ordered by our respective leaders to use different associations as front in asking money from different companies, malls, prominent families, and from any people within our assigned area. Some of the associations that the KGC community are using to raise money are Children's Joy Foundation, Incorporated, Alay sa May Kapansanan Associations, Pagdamay sa Dukha Associations, Life Giver Associations, Life Shavers Associations, Handog ng Pagmamahal Associations, Sam of David Orchestra, among others during the MOB period, we were trained and expressly instructed by PACU that other KJC leaders to deny our true affiliation with KJC if people would ask if we are members of the said group. We were told that we only have to tell the outside people that we were only volunteers and the only reason why we were asking money was not for our own benefit but for the benefits of the beneficiaries of the associations that we were using as front. In most cases, we name drop our affiliated front groups to entice the persons or entities to whom which to whom or which we are begging to or to whom or which we were rendering our carols to give substantial amount of donations. In, 19, in 2012 also, my sister and I went to Davao City to participate in KGC International Congress. Like the one in Baguio City, we were immersed into different activities, showcasing our talent, and we were subjected to fellowship meetings and seminars although the participants' origin was far more diverse than in Baguio City. <clears throat> At that time also, we saw in person the members of KJC home we always saw on TV programs of Respondent Pacquiao. Sometime in December 2012, we were recruited by Marlon Rossetti to be part of his caroling group, which used associations named called Sam of David Orchestra. We told, he told us that we would sing in front of Pastor Kibuloy at his residential address in Quezon City, particularly at KGC Compound, Massart Street, Greenville, Subdivision, Barangay Saoyo, Novaliches, Davao City. It was the very first time that my sister and I met Pacquiao, who blurted out upon seeing us to call, oh, the, past, the Portugal sisters. In fact, after our group's performance, we had a pictorial with Respondent Pacquiao. It must be noted that we all remitted our earnings from whatever fundraising activities we participated into in favor of KGC through its coordinators. After that encounter with Respondent Pacquiao, in his house in Quezon City, several leaders among them is Respondent Simanis kept on recruiting me and my sister to be KGC full-time miracle workers and asked to sign up as full-time workers because accordingly, it is the Father's will and there are many privileges like free education, 
at Jose Maria College, traveling abroad for free, among others. The same offer was repeated by respondent Pacquiao himself during our second encounter in Davao City. In January 2013, KJC Minister Alain Balmes informed me and my sister that respondent Pacquiao invited us to attend and sing during his open field concert. Overjoyed by the fact that it was respondent Pacquiao himself who invited us, we readily accepted the invitation. My sister and I, including our mother and our brother, Benedict, went to Davao City and personally met Respondent Pacquio for the second time. We were able to confirm from Respondent Pacquio's statement himself that indeed he invited us there. When we arrived in Davao City, my sister and I joined for the first time the choir group of Pastor Kibuloy and became part of his live open field concert crusade. During that time, I had this observation that almost all those who were invited to join the choir group had pleasing appearances and being among them amused me and my sister. After the open field concert, Celine Tujeras, a KJC worker, informed us that Respondent Paki would like to have dinner with us at his restaurant at King Chow. So my sister and I, together with our brother and mother, joined Respondent Pacquiao in the same table at the said restaurant. During that dinner, Respondent Pacquiao and Respondent Ingrid recruited me and my sister to be full-time workers, and he convinced my mother that entering as full-time workers in Pacquiao's ministry is the Father's will, which, if obeyed, would bring us blessings, since accordingly we would be secured. He told us that he would give us free education through a scholarship at Jose Maria or JMC with free allowances and free board and lodging that we would have the privilege to be part of his choir group and to appear on his TV, on his live TV program, that we would get the chance to ride his aircraft and that we could accordingly travel abroad for free. We were overwhelmed by the sweet promises and representation made by Respondent Pacquiao that we would part of something bigger than ourselves at the ministry. On the part of our mother, she made up her mind that at that time that entering as full-time miracle workers was ended for our best interest, since it would mean that she and my father would be unburdened with our educational expenses. Looking back, it is still hurting that our desire to belong to something meaningful with Pacquiao, the appointed son of God, and our parents' desire to secure us with bright educational opportunities at JMC was exploited by respondent Pacquiao and Ingrid. At that time, my parents were annually paying 80,000 pesos for our tuition fees alone at Pasig Catholic College. We stayed in Davao City for several days, and during those times, we were brought to KJC Prayer Mountain in Tamayong, Davao City, and we were allowed to roam around the KJC compound near Davao Airport just to convince us how beautiful it would be if we would be permanently staying there as full-time miracle workers. Sometime in May 2013, there was a scheduled KGC Youth Congress in the central headquarters of KGC in Davao City. Every Youth Congress, young people from the different parts of the world and in the Philippines are gathered together for several weeks of competition and activities. Since my sister and I were already members of KGC, we were likewise required to attend the said Congress. My father booked plane tickets for me and my sister Elaine. Little did I know that the said event was just a pretext to provide an avenue to scout would-be members of close in pastoral of Respondent Pacquiao's KGC. As a consequence of constant recruitment and after having been convinced by the respondents that in entering as full-time miracle workers would be for our family's best interest in view of the promises made by Respondent Pacquiao and others. My parents, including me and Elaine, decided to accept the offer and to concede with the recruitment and that we would volunteer as full-time miracle workers after the said Youth Congress. 
After the KJC Youth Congress, my sister and I stayed in Davao City to work as full-time miracle workers of Respondent Pacquiao's KJC. We did not return to Manila anymore. My parents decided that we were safer in Davao and we would be able to finish our studies there at. During our initial stay as full-time miracle workers of KGC, we were asked to sign several documents like the full-time miracle worker form and a pastoral department form in the administrative office of KGC. When we affixed our signature, we were never informed and fully explained with the contents thereof and their consequences. At first, we were housed in Jose Maria or JMC Annex building where all the other new full-time workers like us also stayed. In the said annex, there were several double deck beds and rooms. Each room had five to six beds. The persons housed in the rooms where we stayed are called pastoral care extended. Among my main jobs as pastoral was to assist in preparing respondent Pacquiao's food, clothing, bathing regimens, among others, and to sing during the fellowship or any KGC activities. During our first few months as full-time workers, things went smoothly. Our schedules were routinary, routinary. It was during that time that my sister and I noticed that there are two categories of full-time workers. There are extended pastorals and close-in pastorals. The close-in pastorals have duties and responsibilities which pertain to the day-to-day -day pastoral needs and activities of respondent Pacquiao. The schedules and the movement of close-in pastorals were far more restricted and they were housed in rooms near the rooms of respondent Pacquiao. In June 2013, my sister and I were enrolled in, at Jose Maria College. While studying at JMC, we were still forced to sell things or foods in school, and despite the embarrassment, my sister and I were forced to do so because, again, it was accordingly part of the Father's will as full-time miracle workers to earn money for KJC. About July 2013, my sister and I were transferred to a dormitory near Davao Airport situated inside the KGC Davao compound after we were accordingly elevated to the status as close-in pastorals. During that time, KJC workers confiscated our camera, cell phone, and laptop, and we were prohibited from borrowing from our classmates at JMC because we were not allowed to communicate to our parents. About February 2014, some members of the pastoral care department, including me and my sister, underwent disciplinary action and we were physically punished whenever we committed mistakes. In one instance, one of the workers of Respondent Pacquiao, Respondent Enting, paddled me, my sister, and my fellow workers from the pastoral department using a two-by-two -two wood just because our, rest, our restroom was dirty. In another instance, my sister and I were paddled again because allegedly we left a dirty bag in our bed. After Respondent Roy read a Bible verse to us, Enting paddled each one of us inside the room of Teresita Dandan, a KJC administrator. Like my sister, I was really confused at that time why we were being punished for very trivial reasons. Every after the ordeal, it was very difficult to walk and sit down because of the intensity of the heat of our, on our bodies. I was so shocked at that time because it was the first time that I suffered a physical punishment because even our parents never inflicted corporal punishment on us. The process of disciplinary actions at KGC by inflicting physical maltreatment caused emotional and psychological trauma upon me because I felt that my ins Intrinsic dignity as a child was degraded, considering that I was there for all good reasons, but only to suffer corporal punishment for trivial things which I did not even suffer from my parents. In July 2014, my sister and I were called by Respondent Roy. 
the pastoral department head and one of the lead singer in KJ in the KJC church. Because respondent Pacquiao wanted to talk to us, we were instructed to take a bath, dry our hair, and put on perfume. When we arrived in the room of respondent Pacquiao, he let us sit in his sofa and he asked us about our situation. Respondent Pacquiao asked us about our stay in Davao City and about our school grades. He, however, became more interested in asking us about our loyalty to the Father or how willing we were to submit to the oft-repeated Father's will. Later into the conversation, Respondent Pacquiao began reading the Bible to us, reading verses about commitment, loyalty, and being submissive. At the end of the conversation, Respondent Pacquiao asked us if we understood what we what he meant. I answered that I understood it and that what he meant that I should be obedient and submissive to instructions and that we should not question the son regardless of the nature of the instruction. He likewise made it clear that what he meant with the son is him, he being the appointed son of God, as he has been preaching. On September 1st, 2014, I was 17 years old then, and the tribute program of KGC had just finished. I was already preparing to sleep that time when a fellow pastoral workers told me that I should go to the dining area in the Bible school because Respondent Roy was calling me. I readily went to the dining area and I saw Respondent Roy waiting for me. There were no other people in the dining area at that time, and it was dark and silent because it was already late in the evening, and most of the people with us were already sleeping. Well, just the two of us were there. Respondent Roy gave me few advices like she told me, Blenda, connection mo ito sa amahan, privilege na mabilang sa pastoral, isanctify mo sarili mo. Blinda, this is your connection to the Father. It is a privilege to be part of the pastoral. You sanctify yourself. Then she told me that part of the ministry of the pastorals is to massage respondent Pacquiao. She told me that it is a privilege because not everyone could touch the son and be close to him. She further told me that I should not question whatever happens inside the room of Respondent Pacquiao and that I should just submit myself to him. She told me to prepare, take a bath, brush my teeth, and blow dry my hair after bath. Even if my mind is puzzled at time, I just listen to her. Respondent Roy asked me to get my pair of pajamas and show to her because she wanted to smell it. So I went back to my room and took my pair of pajamas. Then I went back to the dining area and showed to her my pajamas. She smelled my pajamas and said that she would instead lend me her pajamas. So I went back to my room and Respondent Roy went upstairs to get her pajamas before I took a bath. Respondent Roy went to our room and gave me a t-shirt with buttons and pajamas pants a shampoo, palm olive violet color, a lotion and body mist, Bath and Body Works brand, with specific scent of Enchanted. She said that it is the favorite scent of Respondent Pacquiao. She said that I should take a bath and scrub well and that she would wait for me inside the room of Respondent Pacquiao. After I took a bath and blow dried my hair, I went to the room of Respondent Pacquiao, which was then located in the Bible School building. The room of Respondent Pacquiao has two doors. The first door was already opened that time, so I just slowly went inside. However, there is another door leading to the main room of Respondent Pacquiao. I knocked and Respondent Roy opened the door. She led me to the bed of Respondent Pacquiao. At first, Respondent Roy asked me to sit in the bed near the feet of Respondent Pacquiao. During that time, I saw Respondent Pacquiao laying on his bed and he was sleeping and snoring while Respondent Roy was demonstrating to me how to massage Respondent Pacquiao. She told me to start from the feet. She was demonstrating the ways 
to massage him, and I was just listening intently to Respondent Roy. She also told me to massage up to the head of Respondent Roy, but she did not demonstrate it anymore. After Respondent Roy left me in the room, she instructed me that after I massage Respondent Pacquiao, I should not leave him in the room. She told me that I should wait for his instruction. Until and unless there is an instruction from Respondent Pacquiao that I can leave the room, I should not leave. When Respondent Roy left the room, I started massaging the back of Respondent Pacquiao. Respondent Pacquiao was on a slanting position that time. I was very sleepy because it was already 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. When I began to massage the butt area of Respondent Pacquiao, he began to move and he faced me. Since Respondent Pacquiao changed his position, I just continued massaging his foot. He then told me to move in the middle of his bed. So I followed his instruction and I just sat on his bed in a cross leg position and I continued massaging him in the back. But suddenly he rose up and he sat on in front of me. He started to unbutton my t-shirt until he pulled up my whole shirt. He then asked me to turn my back against him. He slowly removed my bra. After he removed my bra, he held my shoulder and he pulled by he pulled my back going down to his bed in a laying position. When I was already lied down, Respondent Pacquiao mounted on top of me. He began rubbing his penis against my vagina, even when he were still, even when we were still both in our pajamas, and he started kissing my neck. I became very stiff and I wanted to shout for help and to question what he was doing, but I remembered what Respondent Roy told me that I am not allowed to ask questions. But when his organ became hard already, he started to remove my pajama pants and underwear. He sucked my breast. He also removed his pajamas pants and his brief. My legs were totally shaking and I was just con controlling my tears. And I just stared in the ceiling during that time, feeling so shocked and helpless. Then Respondent Pacquiao hastily inserted his penis into my vagina. I was so shocked and could not move. I was trying to control my muscles. Respondent Pacquiao touched my both legs and opened it widely. He then pulled my legs upward and forced Simply do the push and pull movement using his penis into my vag vagina. Both my legs and my body were shaking because I could really feel the pain whenever he forced his penis into my vagina. After the several minutes, he pulled his penis out and hurriedly went to the CR. I was left blank, just staring at the ceiling and started to cry. There were so many questions in my head, but I kept it to myself. I just told myself that maybe this is the Father's will in my life. Everything that happened during that time was all shocking to me, since that was the very first time that someone had touched and penetrated my vagina. After Respondent Pacquiao returned from his restroom, he instructed me to put my clothes on. I put my clothes on and I sat in the corner of his bed crying silently. But Respondent Pacquiao called me and said, Blenda, humiga ka dito sa tabi ko at matulog ka na. Blenda, you lie here beside me and sleep. I did as I was told and I slept facing away from him, but he hugged me and clasped at my breast. He told me to go back to my room at 6 or 7 a.m., when others were still sleeping. Before I slept, he instructed me saying, Mamaya, pagkagising mo ng maaga, huwag kang lalabas sa may na pinto doon ka sa likod, sa garden. Later, when you wake up, do not go through the main door, but go through the garden. After he said that, I just nod and said, Opo. I was just devastated that the man whom I have so much respect would do such thing to me. I was helpless and I could not do anything because of fear. He is Pastor Kibuloy, the man whom we believe as the son of God 
and whom I perceived to be a lot of connections, as he frequently said. He was so strong, and I felt so weak and helpless, even to register my slightest complaint. This is the reason why it is only now that I have finally summoned enough strength to file this case. The fear is crippling me, but my resolve now is clear to expose all the respondent otherwise, more like me would end up like me, exploited, raped, broken, depressed, bullied, and even ostracized by the lies penetrated and spread by the respondent, especially Pacquiao. When I went back to the room, I wanted so much to just lay down and rest but my companions started waking up and preparing for the practice of our Thanksgiving and worship presentation program for the next day. I was very sleepy and very stressed. I was dazed and confused. I felt so lost. During practice, I opened my mouth, staring off in space, but I could not hear anything. A week after that horrible incident, I really wanted to ask other pastorals who were with me. I approached one pastoral, Mary Joy Gerald, Ate Joji, because I trusted her. I asked her what happened, Ate. Is that part of being a pastoral? Ate Joji told me, Blends, you are not allowed to question. She just laughed. Ate Joji told Respondent Roy about our conversation. Respondent Roy summoned me and she was very angry. She then told me angrily, I already told you not to question because this is our connection to the Father. When I was about to answer, she added, What? Are we all close to him? Yes, Blenda, all of us are close to him. I did not continue asking. On April 3, 2015, it was my birthday and I asked permission from Respondent Roy that I would celebrate my birthday with my fellow pastoral together with my sister in our room, called as the Blue Room. Respondent Roy consented to my request. We had pajama party that time together with my co-pastorals who were also staying at the Blue Room, namely Stephanie Ibarra, Jona Morales, Catherine Larone, Olive Kiamko, Joji Giral, and Sheila Barbero and my sister. Elaine, who was staying at the Yellow Room. While we were having fun inside the room, Stephanie Ibarra whispered to my ears and told me that Respondent Roy was calling me. So I went outside the room and Respondent Roy was silently whispered to me that I should get ready, take a bath, and report again to Respondent Pacquiao's room. When all my roommates were asleep, including my sister Elaine, who had no idea then about our bodily connection ministry at Respondent Pacquiao room. So I took a bath and went, and when I finished, everyone in blue and yellow rooms were already sleeping, including my sister. I went directly to the room of Respondent Pacquiao. Again, I was terrified because I did not know what would happen to me again after the massage. When I was inside his room for the second time, I saw Respondent Roy massaging the feet of Respondent Pacquiao. When Respondent Roy saw me, she stood up and left the room. I saw Respondent Pacquiao laying in the back position that time. I continued the massage while Respondent Pacquiao was sleeping soundly and he was snoring. As usual, I massaged from his feet until his back only because I was really sleepy and tired as it was already 1 o'clock in the morning that time. I slowly massaged Respondent Pacquiao's because I did not want to wake him up and I was planning to escape immediately after the massage. After an hour and Respondent Pacquiao was still sleeping, I readily left his room without asking permission and went to sleep. I was relieved that nothing happened to me that night. Gradually, as I realized that the so-called connection ministry was nothing but a justification to further abuse me, I started observing the other members of Close In Pastoral. I would intentionally sleep late at night to observe the other pastorals. I noticed that as if there was a routine among us, almost every night one pastoral would take a bath, would wear newly washed clothes, 
and would use the same shampoo brand, Palmoli Violet Color, a lotion and body mist, um, bath and body works brand with specific scent of Enchanted, which according to Respondent Roy, the favorite scent of Respondent Papil. Sometimes others would use Victoria's Secret. I farther observed that the pastoral who took a bath would leave a room and would be back around 6 or 7 in the morning. In 2016, I sought permission to leave and go home, but I was not allowed to go home. Thereafter, I was already under tight watch and I was frequently scolded. In fact, when I talked to my classmate, I was told that there was a demon inside me. I was then not allowed to have anyone near me because allegedly I committed an offense. In March 2016, while we were practicing for the National Children's Day or the birthday of Pastor Kibuloy on April 25, 2016, I was someone again to go on duty under the pretext of bodily connection ministry. For Respondent Pakil, I obeyed and I gave him a massage, but I escaped again. Whenever he slept, I went out of the room. This caused Respondent Roy and Paki to be angry at me, but I, I neither answered them back nor engaged their hostility against me. I really wanted to go home already because of fear, and I did not want I did not understand anymore the KGC ministry. On 1st May 2016, there was a mass at the open field inside the compound of Respondent Pacquiao. While Respondent Pacquiao was preaching, I borrowed the phone of my companion Felicia and I called my mother who was at the airport at that time. I began crying and I begged my mother to go back to the compound. When she arrived, I cried really hard and I begged my mother to give me money for my fare because I really wanted to go home and I tell her everything. At first, my mother hesitated because she was afraid that my father would be angry. But at the end, she conceded. I told my mother to go back to the airport and to meet us there. I went back to my room in JMC to change my clothes as a disguise. I wore a gray hoodie, jeans, and rubber shoes. I met my brother at the cathedral and we waited for the members to leave so we could leave with them. After we sent my mother to the airport, I stayed at the apartment of my friend who also helped me book my ticket. I left for Manila the next day. After I escaped from the kingdom, I told my parents everything that happened to me whilst inside the circle of Respondent Pacquiao. I told them my sister Elaine had no idea yet about what happened to me and that we needed to save her because I knew that she could possibly be the next victim of Respondent Pacquiao. Shortly after I left the KGC, my mother went to Davao City to rescue my sister Elaine. There was really a hard time to rescue my sister, but because of the incessant demand of my mother and considering that my sister was still a minor at that time, my sister was finally released and she went back with my mother in our place in Pasig City, Metro Manila. After our exodus from the Respondent Pacquiao's KJC ministry, he always mentioned my name in his sermon and accusing me and my sister of many things which are not true. I am submitting a video clips of one of said sermons. Several months after I escaped from my traumatic life inside a KJC compound, I contacted several ex pastorals workers who were no longer connected to KJC. They also shared to me their horrible experiences inside. I was surprised that their experiences were worse than mine. A former close-in pastoral told me that she was also raped at a very young age and it did not only happen once but several times for many years during her stay inside the KJC of Respondent Pacquiao. Since it, since it was very hard to escape from KJC, especially if you are part of the pastoral department, she likewise made a way to escape from that hellish Place. She said that she had undergone psychological therapies outside after she left because of the depression and trauma that she experienced. 
Like me, they are too afraid to file cases against respondent Pacquiao, especially that he had wide connection all over the Philippines. Like most of us who became part of his inner circle, we just cried in silence and praying that one day there will be justice to everything that has happened to us at KGC, whose other members have become complicit in respondent Pacquiao's crime. What could have been a spiritual journey with the respondent ended as a nightmare for me and for my entire family. Instead of preparing us for, a, for a spiritual and human development, we were only recruited in order to be exploited both in sexual and labor forms, like my case and labor in the case of my sister Elaine. My suffering did not end when I left KJC, but continues up to now because Respondent Pacquiao continued to spread lies to discredit me and to preempt this instant complaint. The administration of JMC likewise acted in concert, concert with Respondent Pacquiao in causing harm against me, my sister Elaine, and my entire family by depriving me to move forward with my education by unreasonably withholding our transcript of record up to now. I was forced to stop attending school at Pasig Catholic College, PCC, because I was unable to provide my TOR despite formal request by PCC with JMC. JMC opened, opined with, we were still in debt to them, despite the fact that, as promised by Respondent Pacquiao himself, we were scholars there. The malicious refusal to release our TOR is nothing but another ploy to chain us to Pacquiao's KJC in a form of debt bondage. In sum, I was recruited and transported to Davao City, Pasig City, from Pasig City at the BS and the active participants of the Respondent Pacquiao. Ingrid and Simanis, in order to join us, full-time miracle workers of KJC, believing that doing so would be for our salvation of our soul and for the best interests of our family, which I thought would be relieved of the financial burden of my educational expenses as promised by Respondent Pacquiao. Ingrid and Simanis that I would be a scholar at JMC with free allowance and free board and lodging. My recruitment and transportation were done by taking advantage of my vulnerability and that of the family after we became devoted to the Pacquiao. To Pacquiao. The recruitment and transportation were aimed for the purposes of sexually exploiting me and to engage me in forced labor. Respondents were able to traffic me and my sister by exploiting our vulnerability and of our parents who became fanatic members of KGC. Respondent exploited our desire to fill in that void for belongingness and our parents' aspiration to have a secured educational opportunities at JMC. I stayed in Double City, but instead of working for miracles, I was forced to beg and sell in order to raise funds for father, for the father. Worse, I was sexually exploited by Pastor Apollo Kibuloy, and I was made to believe that I cannot question the exploitation because it was wrong to question the father. I believe that a crime had been committed against me and that it is only the strong and fair arms of justice that can help victims like me. I am exposing Pacquiao in order to achieve justice for myself and for his other victims who cannot escape from these criminal acts just because he is powerful, influential, and, and, money, and moneyed. People like me may not be equipped with enough money and power to challenge an adversary like him, but I believe that truth will always prevail, and this is the only way to end the sexual abuses and exploitation that were done by Pacquiao to many minor women like me. I am executing this affidavit complaint to attest the, faithful, the truthfulness of the foregoing and to lodge appropriate criminal cases against Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy, Jacqueline W. Roy, Presente Canada, a.k.a. Inting, Pauline Canada, Ingrid C. Canada, who all may be served with subpoena and other 
processes of this honorable office at the office address of Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name located at KJC Compound, Philippine, Japan, Friendship Highway, Buhangin Davao City, Philippines, and, and Sylvia Simanis, who may be served with subpoena and other processes of this office at Kingdom Local Congregation of KJC in Pasig City, Metro Manila for rape. With respect of Pacquiao as defined under Art 266-A, Part 1C and the Revised Panel Code as amended by RA Number 8353, Qualified Trafficking in Person as defined under Sec. 3 in relation to Sec. 6 of RA Number 9208 as amended by RA Number 10364 with respect to all the respondent. With child abuse as defined under Sec 3B of RA number 7610 with respect to all responded and for any other cases obtaining in the foregoing circumstances. In witness thereof, I have here and to set forth my hand this 18th day of December 9, 2019 at Davao City, Davao del Sur, Philippines. Signed by the complainant. So guys, what do you think of that? Gawa-gawa? Kaya mga pastoral, ano tong bodily connection? What is bodily connection to the Father? Kailangan ba talaga may bodily connection tayo? What is bodily connection? When two body are connected to each other, ano yan? Spiritual? Spiritual ba yan, Pacquiao? Demonyo ka talaga. E kayo din mga pastoral, no? Kinukonsit ninyo itong ano, kadimonyohan ng matanda ito. Ang tanda-tanda mo na, napakadimonyo mo. Mga bata, ginagago mo. Nakukulang pa talaga yung buhay mo, Pacquiao, para e, ano, para ibayad sa mga kagaguhan mo, kadimonyohan mo. Bodily connection to the Father? Spiritual? Wag mo nga kaming paglulukuhin. Yawa ka talaga. Animal ka. Wala akong ibang ano, ipangalan sa iyo. Mangkanor na animal. Kayo guys. How do you feel? How do you feel about this? Sige nga kayo, kayo mga ano, mga mga audience ko dito. How do you feel about this? Do you feel good about this? What can we do? Should we not do anything? Should we just keep quiet? Nakakabuisi to. Just ko. Magbasa nga muna tayo ng ano, ng 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 comments. Kasi nabubuisi ako. Yung ano ko, yung kaspa ko nagsilipitan. Yung dugo ko. Pumunta sa ulo. Ay, Diyos ko. Okay. Joke ka lang. Tama po yan. Gagawin ko if makaharap ko si Quicks. Dami niyang skip verses sa Bible. Tuloy pa ang investigation. Tuloy po. Kone, imagine ayaw ng parents mo na madapuan ka ng lamok dahil sa sobrang pagmamahal. Pero... Papaluin ka lang ng mga tulad ni Inting Canada na ubod ng pangit. Tama. Napakapangit. Pati kung ano yung itsura niya, ganun din ang ugali niya sa pagdating sa mga ano, mga pastoral, sa mga tao, sa mga workers. Let's do it, Mang Kanur, yung name ng aktor sa isang Filipino pornography. Ay, ganun pa. Tama. Tama talaga yung Mang Kanur. Mang Kanur 666. <laughs> Sabi ni Let's Do It. Ed Erastin, long time no hear from you, Arlene. Yes, thank you so much, Ed. Busy ang buhay natin. Um, Juna Sakal, why those victims did not ask help from Rafi Tolpo? I asked, I've been asking help from Rafi Tolpo, but it seems like the Philippines media and mga, mga tao na sana makatulong sa atin, they are bingi. They are deaf. They are too afraid. At sa tingin nyo, si Rafi Tolpo matapang? No. I try to send him messages, pero wala, ignore tayo. 
Sana naman no, pakinggan niyo naman kami, pakinggan niyo naman yung mga victims no. Umaapila ako sa inyo. Kayong nasa Pilipinas na pwedeng makatulong. Kahit si Manny Pacquiao, sana naman matulungan ninyo kami sa laban na to. Yung mga iglesia ni Kristo diyan, yung taga dating daan no na mga ano mga pinuno. Tulungan niyo naman kami. Wala po kaming ibang mapupuntahan kasi napakalaki ng kalaban namin itong si Pacquiao. Ang dami pang connection. Ang dami kasi binabayaran ng mga ano, mga general si Jan sa ano, sa Philippines, no? Kaya ang laki ng ulo niya, kala niya siya yung ano, siya yung batas. Pero sana naman pakinggan niyo naman kami. Pakinggan niyo naman yung mga victims na mga Pilipino din kung may mga puso kayo. Erfa Imprado, hello dai, grabe na good ning mga testimony kaluoy sa ilang mga innocenting members. Luoy good, grabe, kone sana humaba pa ang buhay ng mundo ni Pacquiao. Yes, sana talaga humaba kahit umabot man lang yan ng 100 years old. Nga i-spend niya sa federal prison. Satisfaction na yan. Kone, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good to men to do nothing. Thank you for doing something, Arlene and others. Yes. Thank you. I want to cry na ninigas ako sa galit. Naku, nakakagalit talaga, no? Nakakabuisit talaga. Ganito yung, ano, yung, yung ginagawa, mga front nila na... Puro, puno pag-ibig. Puno pag-ibig ba yan? May physical connection at lahat sila. Yes, may physical connection. Tapos sabihin ni, ano, ni, ni Jacqueline Roy, walang ganyang nangyayari. Ito pa yung kasinungalingan, yung bot-bot ko, idagdag dyan sa ano mo. Sa bot-bot mo. Itong demonyong matandang kibuloy na to. Napakamanyak. Mga bata pa yung binibiktima. Humanap ka nga ng kaedad mo. Yan si Ingrid ka na dagay. Ganyan yun mo yan lagi. Kasi bagay kayo niyan. Bakit mga bata ang binibiktima mo? Kung hindi ka gago, kung hindi ka yawa, ano ka? Tapos sabihin, tapos ito pa yung sasabihin nila sa mga workers no, at saka mga members. Mga gawa-gawa lang yan kasi malapit na bumalik ang Panginoon. Kaya galit na galit ang demonyo. Galit na galit daw ang mga demonyo. Paano magagalit ang demonyo nga ikaw yung demonyo? Puro dimin, demonyo na lang yung ano, yung binabalingan mo. Samantalang ikaw ang demonyo. Gawain ba ng Panginoon yan? Yung ginagawa mo? Wisit talaga tong matanda to. Na, Nahahigh blood talaga ako sa matandang matanda na to. Napakadiri mo. All right. Now let's go back kasi medyo late na dito, 11 PM na dito. Uh, bilisan ko na to ha, guys, kasi may pasok tayo bukas eh. The pastoral life of Mang Canor, no? So ito yung ano mga mga yung yung totoong buhay nila number one, ilabam kanila in the beginning but after that oh umpisa na yung sleepless nights mo like what I have read tapos magiging servant ka na break up your personality emotionally spiritually and and physically ah, iba pala yung ano ko hindi ko na i-share yung aking screen ulit Nakakaano, nakaka-high blood tong demonyong kibuloy to. Oh, tapos physical abuse, no? Yan yung reality ng ano nila, ng buhay nila. Emotional abuse, sexual abuse, uneducated, hindi sila pinapaaral. Tingnan mo si ano, si Stephanie hanggang third grade lang. Not allowed to communicate to the family members even if the family is a member. Not allowed to ask question. Not allowed to talk about PD or pastor duty or night duty. Not allowed to say no during PD. 
no ganyan ang mga ano nila ang mga buhay nila so what is KOJC family lives looks like no pag ano pag may pamilya ka member ka ng KOJC o kaya worker ka broken family ang ang ano mo ang expectation mo family quality time not allowed family relationship not allowed Parents not allowed to discipline own children, only mangkanor or the in charge is allowed to discipline your children. Parents and children are separated. Parents not allowed to talk to children, particularly if assigned as pastoral. Parents and children not this has distant relationship with each other. So hindi nakakilanlan yung mga ano, yung magulang tsaka yung anak sa loob ng kingdom. Kasi wala sa kanila yung, yung family unit. They have to break that apart. Life outside the KOJC. Ano ba yung buhay outside of KOJC like myself? You know? Anong buhay namin dito sa labas? We have free life. Meron tayong freedom. We have the opportunity to grow. We expand our life. We see the horizon. Quality family life. We have bonding with our family. We have true love that we shared with each other. Quality living. Nakakatulog kami sa tamang oras. Nakakakain kami sa tamang oras at tamang pagkain. At kung anong pagkain gusto namin kainin. Quality education. Quality food. Quality rest. Quality medical. Hindi kami nag, na humihingi ng, ng tulong ko kanikanino pag kami nagkasakit. Quality life, blessed materially, spiritually, emotionally, and keep our beauty intact. <laughs> so yan yung buhay outside of KOJC. Now, life in freedom. Ano ba yung buhay pag tayo ay malaya, no? Happy and satisfied with our own skin. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo ano, worried kung ano yung reaction ng ibang tao. Hindi tayo worried ng opinion ng mga tao. Like me? Ano yung tinatawag ni Pacquiao sa akin? No, condensed milk daw ako. I-play ko nga yan. Yung video na yan kasi hindi nyo narinig, no? Sige, i-play ko yan. Para masaya. Of the poisonous tarantula. Oh. Nahuli na rin. Urihin na lang. Okay. Well, uh, itong uh, balik tayo kay uh, Marielin Villarubia. Totoo itong sinabi ni Villaru, uh, Villarubia, Marielin, no? Kasi ang ama, kahit naman sino pwede gamitin niya, basta ang mensahe pareho lang. Tulad ngayon, bakit nagkatawang tao siya, para tayo ay gawing anak din niya, katulad niya. Oh. So, ang sinasabi rito, ah, uh, kung uh, siya ba ay uh, siya imahe ng anak ng tao, totoo yun. Eh, ang lahat na ito, sinabi niya, nagpapatunay na ang makapangyari ng Diyos ay uh, ang nagbalik na Panginoong Esos sa mga huling araw, ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Totoo yun. Kasi nandiyan yan sa, uh, sa sinabi niya sa uh, John 1.14, no? The Word was made flesh. And then 1 John 1.12, The word uh, that gives life. Ang tagal. Ang tao, makikita na, mahihipo na, at uh, matatanganan na. Teka, mali, 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 mali ito. Ito kaya. So, kayo lahat, all of our uh, kingdom nation that have read all of this, these are now in the hands of our lawyers. And they will be studying the appropriate charges to be filed against this certain individuals in due time. Kahit sino hindi makakatulong sa inyo. Tulungan niyo sa radio ngayon. Ang, ang advice ko lang sa inyo, kumuha kayo ng mga lawyers niyo. Kumuha kayo ng mga bihasang lawyer niyo para itipensa kayo. Laban sa ginawa niyo. Uh, muli, pinasasalamatan kita AC, ACS alias CM <laughs> maraming nagtatanong bakit daw condensed milk secret 
Kalau ini selimi semua. Kita buka kapal itu. Ikau lahat itu. <laughs> alam alam niyo, kayo mga tao, alam niyo, ang lahat ng usapin, matatapos yan sa korte. Legal, lahat, ano pang klaseng usapin, matatapos yan sa korte. Salita, salita lang sa inyo. Sa amin, hard evidence. Ano man ang mga sinasabi ninyong mga panidira, mga kalupuhan ninyo. O ito, meron pang itawal sa mo. O, ginamit na naman niya ito. Meron na naman siya paninira dito. Hindi ko nababanggitin ito kasi supplemental na ito. Thank you, ha? For helping us. Hindi mo na mabubura rin yan. Kasi meron kaming uh, forensic uh, computer expert. Hindi mo mabubura sa cellphone mo. Huwag mo burahin. At saka, bili ba ko sa iyo eh? Hindi ka nag-fake account eh. Talagyo, talagang pangalan mo, nilagay mo eh. Hindi kami nahirapan, pati letrato mo nandito pa oh. Kala mo kung sinong blandi eh. <laughs> Grabe ang mga kusasyon ninyo ha. Grabe ang sinasanggap ninyo, tinitipon ninyo lahat. Oh, tatayo kaya yan sa, sa korte? Tatayo kaya yan sila? Ilan yan sila? Pinakamarami siguro sa inyo. 14, 20. Ay, sabihin mo na 100. Nangyarap kong witness sa inyo, ilan? More than that. Baka 500 pang tatayo laban sa inyo. Ganyan ang usapin sa legal. Ito pa nila nito, yun ay yung kingdom nation. Why sila, di ba? Nag-volume of fire sila sa inyo sa pagpasimula para makilala ka kung sino ka. Bigla guminto. Lalo kang tumapang. Kala mo natakot ang kingdom nation. Hindi. Binigyan ka namin ng talik na pakahaba at kumagat ka sa patibong. Kumagat ka sa trap. Kumagat ka sa strategy. Ngayon, huli ka. Huli ka na. Huwag mong i-deny ito. You cannot deny it. Kasi pwedeng saliksikin namin yan sa computer. Naroon kami Meron kami yung forensic expert yan. Kompleto kami. Huwag kayong mag-alala. <laughs> kayong mga nangaako sa akin, King Tablation, ilagay ninyo lahat yan. Kusubaybayan namin lahat yan. Wala kami palalampasin niya. This is to protect the King Tablation's membership all over the world from your poison. From your poison, whoever you are. Hindi no, namin palalampasin yun. So, enough of that. At least nalaman muna ngayon na nahuli ka na. Oo. Oh, eh, sa tanggal, magkakamali din kayo. Eh. In the long run, magkakamali din ang kalaman. Eh. Kung sa boxing pa, naghihintay na lang kung magkamali kayo. Pag nagkamali kayo, tama kayo dyan. Ngayon, huli ka na. Naka-transmit na lahat ito. Hmm. Ilan ang lawyer mo sa Amerika? Ilan? Kumuha ka na yung magaling. Ako, tinatanong mo, ilan ang lawyer ko dyan? Labing malo lang naman. <laughs> ano man ang klaseng Pagwawalang hiyan ninyo pag ako sa akin, harapin at ipakita ninyo ang mga ebidensya niyo. Dahil ako marami akong ebidensya. Kilala ko man yung mga sinasabi ninyo, mga tinitipon ninyo. Kilala namin lahat yan. Ang buong kingdom nation, kilala sila kung sino sila. Hmm. Salitaan sa kanila. Sa amin, hindi bilang salita. Merong ebidensya. Ganyan yan. Ako, under the law. Pag nagkasala ko, demanda ninyo ako. 
Pag nagkasala rin kayo at nakaisip ako, i-demanda kayo, I may say for sake kingdom. Hindi, sarili ko, okay lang sa akin. Kasi that's my ministry as a uh, contestant. They shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Okay lang sa akin kasi yung ministry ko. Pero I'm not only alone. I am the leader of the kingdom nation and spiritually I have the obligation and responsibility to protect my ship under my care from poisons, from the, uh, the uh, predators like you, from false accusations, from confusions. I will protect them by facing your poison with poison that will come back to you. Mm. Ganon dito sa lupa. Yung usapin din natatapos sa social media yan. Natatapos na sa 40 yan. Tingnan natin. Kaya, natingat lang kunti, sabi pa nga ni Jamal, no? Ingat. <laughs> Pero hindi na ako pag-ingat ngayon. Nandito na eh. Nagkamali ka na eh. So, nandito na. Hintay mo na lang. In due time. Well, my advice to you is get a very good lawyer to defend you there in US and here in the Philippines because the kingdom nation is all over the world. So demand them all over the world. When they demand us here to Brazil, when they demand us here to Indonesia, when they demand us here to Europe, lahat. Kasi involve mo, buong kingdom nation yan. Pag general mo ako, general mo buong kingdom nation. Pwede silang mag-demanda sa'yo. Dito lahat, nakademanda ka ngayon. Sa lahat ng KLC. Nag-demanda sa'yo yan. Ganyan ang inaharap mo. Pag tumuntong ka dito, o dyan sa bansang kung nahal ka naroon ngayon, hindi ka rin tatantan na namin yan. Mas marami at mabugalo dyan. This is not vindictiveness. This is just a defense to protect the ship under my care from all of the poisons that you are spreading all over the world on the kingdom. You did not do this before. You've been there for a long time. You did not do this. Now that the kingdom nation is very wealthy and very rich, you are doing this for extortion or for anything else? I don't know. Speculation. But ang aming duda, bakit ngayon ang aming tumitira sa akin na hindi daw kayaman na at napaka nasa buong sandibang e for many many years itong mga taong ito hindi nagkaroon ng idea at tirahin ko dito lalo na yung nagaling dito pera yun eh kaya hindi sila lumalantad eh ikaw T-A-N-C kasama ni A-O-N ikaw is here papakasikat kayo sino subo yun nung nakatapos nung may tali sa liig nyo. Para kayong mga aso nila na tali. Kayo ang kahol ng kahol. Sila nakatago sa likod nyo. O, oh, ngayon, kayo lumantan. Ay, kayo kawawa ngayon. Tulad din ni Kwanito, ni DSP. Isa rin PNG ngayon. DSP. Sumubo siya, o. Oh. O, oh, ako ang unang dinimanda niya dito. Dismiss lahat. Ngayon siya nasa hot water na yun. Makakabayad kaya siya ng damage sa akin sa ginawa niya. Ganon din sa'yo. Sige, sugod kayo ng sugod. Mga TNG. <laughs> Pero ang mga amo niya nakatago sa likod. Mas wise pa yung nasa Manila sa inyong na grupo nila eh. Nung inutosan sila, alam namin kung nangyayari lahat. Alam namin, hindi lang namin sinasabi. Inutusan sila, tirahin ninyo si Kibuloy, birahin ninyo. Wise yung nasa Manilang grupo nila eh. Anong sabi nila? Bakit kayo may inutusan nyo? Kung meron ganyan talaga ng mga pagyayari, bakit niya kayo pumunta dito? Kayo ang magimana, kayo ang makita. Sige, supportahan namin kayo. Pero kayo, na nagutos sa amin, kayo ang nasa una. Huminto, aayaw. O tingnan ninyo, kayo pinapasubo nila. Kaya ngayon, napasubo ka. Malaki problema mo ngayon. 
<risa> Sa totoo lang, laki ng problema mo ngayon. <laughs> laki ng problema mo ngayon. Pati itong uh, puti na kasama mo, na kumbuya mo, malaki din problema nito. Maganap na kayo ng magaling yung abogado, mahal pa naman yung abogado dyan. <laughs> So mga kingdom citizens, ito na po, kingdom citizens. Oh, tingnan nyo guys, nananakot no? <laughs> Diyan siya magaling, nananakot, wala namang alam sa batas. <laughs> Tayo patatakotin niya, kailangan ko daw ng lawyers, kumuha daw ako ng magaling na lawyers. Pwede ko kailangan ng lawyers, you don't need lawyers if you don't have a sin, or if you don't commit any crimes. Siya, kailangan niya ng lawyers kasi wanted siya. Oh, nananakot ang wanted. Siya daw. Oh, tatakutin tayo pagdating sa laws. Sige nga, pumunta ka nga dito, matandang manyakis. Pumunta ka dito, harapin mo kami at dalhin mo yung mga witnesses mo. Sabi mo, meron kang ano, 500. Kahit ako siguro ang mag-witness. <laughs> Just ko, ito pa yung ano ko, yung yung bot-bot idagdag diyan sa iyo kay Buloy na manyakis, matanda, nakakadiri ka. My goodness. So guys, yon narinig nyo ha, narinig nyo na yan. Ay, just ko. Oh, ano pa yung ano, life in freedom. You know, we reach our great potential. We achieve our, our dreams, you know. We are always in the process of achieving our dreams, living successful life. Joy without the unlimited, you know, goals na pinapatong sa iyo. Living an unrestricted life. Walang magkocontrol, gaganon sa leeg mo. Experiencing great things in life. And we all have careers, mga career holders tayong nang lumabas no? at um, living a free life. Successful contributors to the society. So ganyan ang mga buhay outside the kingdom and being free. Now what is blessing? What is a blessed life? You know, blessed life is a, um, you know, it's a personal Um, description actually. That means you are happy, you are content, you are grateful, you are joyful. You know, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Ngayon, walang liberty dyan sa kingdom ni, ano, ni Mang Kanor. That means, wala doon ang Espiritu ng Panginoon. Kaya magsilayasan na kayo dyan, mga workers, kung gusto nyo ng kaligtasan. Wala dyan ang kaligtasan. Ano pa ang, ano, ang, ang, ang blessed life? Living a meaningful life. Abundance in health. Financial restoration. Miracles after miracles happen to our life. No? Kaya in conclusion, guys, You know, we all see this type of abuses and inhumane practices by this Mangkanor and his organization. What can we do as people, as community? What can we do? How can we change this? Where do we start the change? You know, how are we going to stop this abuse, these abuses? This type of inhumane practices by the so-called disappointed son of the devil. How can we help our fellow citizens? How can we hold Mang Kanor accountable? And how can we save the people? Guys, Christians out there in the Philippines... We all have moral responsibilities with each other. I am appealing to all of you. Let's hold this devil 
Mancanor, a.k.a. Pacquiao, accountable for everything that he has done to the people. Let's stand up together. Suportahan niyo po ang laban namin. Umaapila ako sa mga pastors dyan sa Pilipinas. Kung ang hangarin ninyo ay kaligtasan ng kaluluwa, meron tayong mga moral responsibility sa bawat isa. Magkaisa po tayo. Tulungan niyo po kami na matulungan ang aming mga kasamahan na mahinto ang ganitong pag-aabuso. We cannot change if we are not going to step up. Kung wala, kung takot tayo lagi, walang mangyayari. Kaya magkaisa po tayo. Let's have the courage to step up and face this devil. Because if we are together, nothing is impossible. Salamat po sa lahat. Again, salamat sa inyong mga support. Um, yung ano po, yung sinabi ko sa inyo na meron tayong mission, no? Diyan sa Pilipinas. Um, our mission is already started. Um, Pinupuntahan po natin ang ating mga mga churches dyan. Kinakausap po natin ang mga leaders ng mga churches na magkaisa tayo sa laban na ito. Hinihiling ko po sa aking mga followers, no please subscribe my channel and share my my videos to your friends. Um, hindi ako lagi nagla-live kasi I have career, I have family, I'm still a student, I'm taking my master degree, but I am doing my best to um to spread the awareness as much as I can. Kaya tulungan niyo po ako na maging matagumpay po ang laban na ito. Uh, meron po tayong um agent no na pumupunta sa mga sa mga churches diyan sa Pilipinas para um ibigay po sa kanila ang ating mga documents, ang ating mga legal documents at upang ma ma um ma ian ma share po nila sa kanilang mga congregation sa kanilang mga members at matulungan po tayo na ma-hold si ano si Mang Kanor na accountable um patuloy pa rin po namin kailangan ng inyong mga tulong um nag-iisa lang po ako dito no um minsan pina-finance ko itong mga ganitong ano mga ganitong project but my resources is is limited uh, meron namang iilan dito no na who are helping me um when it comes to a project like this um kung meron po kayong maitulong na para maging successful po ang mga agents natin doon sa ano sa Pilipinas sa kanilang mga ginagawa it would be highly appreciated po no um when when time is right um i-update po namin kayo sa mga development na, na mga nanangyayari kaya marami pong salamat uli sa mga tulong ninyo at sa suporta ninyo sa ating laban god bless you po sa inyong lahat mag 3 hours na po dito mag 3 hours na po tayo na nandito sa live at mag midnight na po dito sa akin um, kaya nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyo sa mga sa mga live viewers ko at sa mga subscribers, sa mga supporters. Salamat po and I praise God for all of you at salamat sa tiwala po ninyo. Um, salamat po sa mga prayers no na you know there's a lot of people here, a lot of churches who prayed for me. I don't even know them. But they, they designated time to pray for me. Kaya nataba po ang aking puso and I'm really grateful for everything that you are doing for me. Siguro kung wala kayong ano, prayers, no? hindi ko naghagawa itong mga ginagawa kung ito. Kasi life is so busy, you know? Ang dami kong dinajagal. But I, I'm trying to do my best para uh, mabigyan ko ng atensyon ang mga importanteng bagay. And this is very important because this is about saving people. This is about saving souls for God. Kaya um, nagpapasalamat ako sa mga tulong ninyo. So again, um, good day dyan sa Pilipinas, no? At good night sa dito sa US at sa la, ibang panig ng mundo um, kung saan mo po kayo na nakikinig. Kaya maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Uh, muli, this is Arlene Stone, a.k.a. The Brave Heart, um, Arlene Rocks. So, 
magpapasalamat po ako sa inyo at sa muli po uh, ng ating pagkikita. God bless you all and I love you. Bye-bye.